And that makes us live. Woo. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles. Another session. I don't even know. Do I, have a, do I have a thing that I say every time? I don't think I have a thing that I say every time. <laughs> Welcome to this homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign, uh, for which I am chiefly to blame, if not necessarily responsible. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I am the uh, host, GM, creator of this Amatia universe, and uh, occasional, uh, I don't know, wildlife wrangler, in which I throw wildlife at my players and watch them destroy it. It's <laughs> kind of fun and cathartic and scary all at the same time. Who are my players? Well, they're sitting around the table right now. Why don't they introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Jody. I play Clark. Uh, he is a half-orc uh, fighting rogue who has maybe found love and a place in the world and religion, all at the same time. Weird. Wow. So Congratulations. He's retired now. It was a good day. It was yeah. a good day. Uh, my name is Marie. Uh, I play Alzara, the Wood Elf Druid. Um, I am also the Hoarder of Dice. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Also married to a tree. But that's also a married to a tree. Uh, my name is Pat. I play Amarin Ilisar. Uh, blessings of Palexia be upon you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Hey, I'm Nax, and I play Zacchaeus, half elf wizard. I had no clever intro today. <laughs> and you've got a you've got a yellow spot in your shirt, so you're not quite yeah. just a floating head. Yeah, cool. Eventually, we'll have a, a backdrop for that as well. Yeah. And there's a yellow spot like for my microphone too, so it sort of blends into my shirt. Oh yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really cord, color coordinated. Yeah. <laughs> so, let us let Please. us recap a little bit that happened in the last session. Uh, the group who uh, I, I we've kind of got a collective noun for the group, Sodalitas. Uh, it's not one that's really emphasized that much outside of uh, I'm hearing myself in my own headphones here. Outside of uh, kind of group recaps uh, but it is formally there and there's sort of a piece of document which some of you I think saw if not signed. But the group decided to make an attempt to go and find the downed hobgoblin ship that you encountered when you first entered the Orkdana, or the area of the Orc Islands. Or, more specifically, you're looking for the strange cannon, which uh, was uh, blasting away at your ship when you arrived. You travel with Quag and his new fishing vessel, which you get the impression is someone else's vessel that he decided that he wanted to use. You dove down where Zakis remembered the ship capsized with magic to help you breathing, or swimming in some cases. On the floor of the water, or floor of the ocean really, you discovered the back half of the ship, the aft next to a crevasse. The forward part of the ship, along with the cannon presumably, had likely fallen deeper below the ocean floor. You did see the remains of a hobgoblin sh uh, sailor, missing one leg that was floating nearby, and Clark noticed that the uh, body was still carrying one of their uh, interesting curved thin blades. So Clark, being a, somewhat of a collector of blades, decided let's take this. Unfortunately, this it seemed now. as though the body was infested by a swarm of nasty little toothed fish called quippers. The quippers, quippers swarmed over Clark, starting to chew him into tiny little bits, releasing cloud after cloud of blood into the water. As you fought to contain this swarm and reduce it, and Clark trying to hold on to the prize which he was looking for, you realize that the blood of the water caused a much bigger problem. A pod, I guess you might say, of giant uh, killer... Not really killer, were they? They were... Uh, what were they called? The they were white sharks. sharks. Great white sharks. Giant who, uh, sharks. Giant sharks. Who came uh, looking for the meal that was being offered. Uh, only to realize, or all of you realize, that the leg that was missing probably was from one of them, as the Quippers had attracted them the first time. But they had been no, gone, because there had been no fresh blood until now. A battle ensued, in which you tried to mostly survive the giant white sharks at first, and then later the tides returned, quite literally, as Amrun cast uh, Water Walk and most of you started shooting up towards the surface. Uh, a little bit aghast that these sharks were able to actually keep up with you as you were traveling upward and take their additional strikes. However, you prevailed over the strike over the sharks. Moreover, 
Clark managed to uh, deal some very heavy blows in the shark that he was fighting, and with uh, Elzara's assistance, uh, managed to take the body of that shark back to the somewhat surprised fishing vessel. Once on board, the orcs, uh, believing that Clark was the principal one responsible for its death, given that he was the one more or less You're right. uh, <laughs> fist deep in it, I think, at the time, because he's not your blade in it, I seem to recall, um, proclaimed Clark to be a shark killer. And it feels uh, almost like a bestowed title to some degree. Uh, the uh, result of bringing this this uh, shark up on board not only uh, presented them with additional meat, additional bounty that they probably weren't expecting, uh, given that it was almost the same length as the ship itself, it also seemed to rather impress a, a young uh, orc uh, by the name of Sorix, who boldly walked up to Clark and without any introduction or whatsoever, uh, planted a big fat kiss. True. And then she introduced herself. Uh, it seemed that she was somewhat impressed by your early work. At that point, the group rested and decided that the uh, rest was going to be extended. You did some work on board the ship, helping with the necessary repairs. They gathered in their fish for the day, and then you returned back to shore to make plans for the next day. Now, I don't remember if we had, uh, you guys did take a rest that night. I think you might have gathered and taken a rest. Yeah. Um, in any case, we needed it. In any case, the rest now will have happened. Long rest. And need a long rest Ooh. as you rest throughout the evening. Once again, I suspect uh, staying on uh, Quag's mother's floor yeah. because she still had offered that space to say. Uh, I do have something to do before we okay. rest if we are. Sure. Uh, I don't think we had actually gotten home at the end of last session. I, I think you were heading back there. Yeah. But the intention seemed to be that it was pretty much the yeah. end of the day for you. And it would have been a long day anyway out at sea. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just. Uh, if, if, if there's nothing else, then yeah. Um, basically, uh, Amron would go around looking for another person who's missing a limb, okay. finger, or eye. Not so much fingers, but that's what I can find. And uh, uh, basically, someone else he can help. He does, to some degree, want to know if uh, it would work at restoring lost eyes as well. Uh, the spell itself. Kind of says lost members and talks about limbs and fingers and toes, but um, but yeah, if uh, he'd look around for someone who basically could use having a limb back, and okay. if that happens, if he happens to be someone who's missing an eye, then he'll try that first. Okay, that's um, curious. Let's mm -hmm. make it a um, just a survival roll. Oh, sorry, investigation roll, I should say. While that's happening as well, they have unloaded the shark and they're taking it off to be slaughtered. Um, the majority of the fish does not get eaten right away. The majority of it actually goes to the smokehouse. They'll smoke it overnight and start to preserve it for the, uh, for the time ahead. Something that you had observed before, Clark, was that while they fished a lot, it's not a huge village. Mm. And they don't need that amount of fish all the time. But there does seem to be some sort of preparation towards the, the uh, winter that's coming. Yeah possibly even to feed uh, the armies themselves. Yeah. Um, and majority of it is, is fish. There are some which do some, uh, some probably some shellfish uh, diving as well. Uh, there would be other sort of uh, crustaceans and things like that they'd be collecting. But for the most part, it's just barrels upon barrels upon barrels of fish. Smoked, salted, dried in other ways as well. How was your roll? 10. 10? Yeah, you, you go around for a while, and there's still that language gap, unfortunately, to kind of understand mm -hmm. what they're, they're saying. Um, and you do find someone who's missing a few fingers on one of his hands, but doesn't really understand what you're looking for at first. Um, how do you demonstrate to them what you'd like to do? Hmm. Um, he will go. No. Emrun. Uh, did he catch the name of the lady who he restored her foot? Probably. I don't know if I have it read on my. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it was mentioned, but if he if he did hear it, then he'll. Quag did say who it was and what her job was and stuff. Yeah, well, it, she was teaching sewing, I think, 
but she used to be a fisher person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, he would point towards her hut, say her name, uh, and then kind of lift up a boot so you can't see his foot from under his robe, and then put the boot out again. Okay. Um, Let's make this a performance check then. As you tried to sort of slightly, a slightly better bonus in my investigation. Hopefully, <laughs> I don't roll a four this time. <laughs> Yeah, we're only six. <laughs> not a four. Thirteen. Thirteen. It takes a bit of time, and there's a, you actually attract a bit of attention from a couple of the others who mm-hmm. kind of come over and you're trying to figure out what you're doing. I'm doing the hokey pokey. They, they start to talk amongst themselves uh, until uh, it, it it takes about an hour uh, of, of of talking, convincing. By now, there's a half a dozen orcs surrounding you, and that that uh, woman who you'd helped the day before comes out and. It seems like when she starts to explain it, suddenly there's a, a bit of, of <laughs> realization of what's being said. This man is uh, a fool. He doesn't speak a proper language, but... He grew my foot back. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, and there, I mean, there's a lot of confusion and not really understanding, but when she comes out, um, the, the, the most of them go quiet and with yeah. some reverence, and the, the fellow you talk to... I would greet her. Uh, ...kind of holds out his hand. He still looks skeptical. He's only he's got like three fingers left. The other two look like they've been chewed off, like they're very roughly uh, cut off. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's no one else who has, like has a more major injury, then yeah, uh, he'll cast regenerate on his uh, his hand, and he'll get the fingers back, any toes that were lost. Um, that part takes about two minutes. He also will feel really healthy for the next hour. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so I, over those two minutes, he's kind of amazed at that. Because yeah, it takes he, about a minute to cast it anyway. Yeah, and yeah, he'd be um, doing, again, the same sort of, like, molding, like, the shape of some uh, of water into the rough shape of the fingers and, yeah, basically building a lattice for them to grow into. Okay. Uh, after that couple of minutes, the, the fingers are restored. You see him kind of straighten up and roll his shoulders a little bit like he'd been pained. Uh, and he kind of has this puzzled and pleased look on his face. Uh, and then uh, when the others start interrogating him, he, he sort of like nods his head and well, speaks encouragingly. Slaps you on the shoulder, which nearly doubles you over <laughs> uh, just from the, the sheer weight of it. I get a 10 acrobatics roll to attempt to tuck and roll. Yeah, you're you're able to kind of you, you're you're kind of used to their enthusiastic well. uh, uh, response. So at least you get that arm down to kind of yeah. keep. Your I do a Charlie Chaplin match. like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, once again, there's sort of a, 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 almost a, a celebration, and they uh, start pulling you towards the shore. Oh crap! They're gonna drown me. <laughs> Witchcraft. Yeah, <laughs> and a few of them have kind of grabbed you by the by mm-hmm. the arms, and your feet are. Bit off the ground at the moment. Uh, and sure, I can go with this. <laughs> it seems like fairly regularly, most evenings, they they have some sort of uh, camp or fire down by the shore. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not really sure. Actually, make a. Let me see. Make a religion check. Uh, there you go. Thirteen. It's not exactly a religious ceremony, but it is a ritual. Mm-hmm. You get the impression, yeah. kind of celebrating the good harvest for the day. Uh, a way to unwind. Once again, the uh, the uh, drink is handed around. The um, uh, anatu orum is uh, handed around. It's that thick, uh, honey sweet uh, drink. A little bit, a little bit watered down this time. Uh, mm-hmm. Almost as though they're they're kind of have a limit of it, and uh, it doesn't need to last a whole day when you're drinking it in this form. Yeah, uh, and you don't want it to last all night. And it's warmed <laughs> up a little bit as they as they kind of keep these these uh, uh, ceramic pots near the fire themselves, so it actually thins it out a little bit. So it turns into sort of almost a, it's like the the hot chocolate equivalent of a hot toddy in some ways, for those who might know those those kinds of drinks. Uh, Yeah, Amron will, I mean, Amron's fine with celebrating this. Uh, However, he's going to do what he can to not drink all that much. (laughs) He'll he'll feign drinking. Uh, Uh, Make a sleight of hand roll. Can I make it performance? Sure. Because that I have. Ah, 18. Yeah, you're able to kind of, you know, acknowledge it and kind of as the jug is handed around, you tip it yeah. back, but not quite enough to get mm-hmm. too much to your lips and then yeah. hand it forward again. 
some of them seem rather surprised because they seem to be having a lot more of it. And uh, while they're they're hardy folk, uh, they are showing signs of it after a while and seem to be a little bit surprised that you're not. And you find that the jug kind of handed to you more frequently at that point, but uh, still able to... to everyone will pretend to stagger around. And, uh, after a while, he will excuse himself and, and head home. But uh, yeah. after checking to make sure the fingers are... Everything's going fine. Yeah, he's been kind of flexing them, showing them off to everybody. Yeah. Uh, Look! Chop! They regenerate again. <laughs> yeah. That only lasts so an hour. Yeah, it's not really going to work that way. Um, I think that part only lasts for two minutes. Uh, or it takes well, two minutes. It, it takes uh, two minutes to do it, but yeah, they regenerate a hit point every round for the next hour. Yeah, it doesn't regain any other uh, limbs, though, at that point. Just hit points. Yeah. Uh, but no, they're not quite that... Uh, <laughs> not quite that enthusiastic. <laughs> What are the rest of you doing while you see him go off for the evening? Yeah, I'll come back there afterwards. Yep. Rest and relax, I would imagine. Yeah. Okay. Chit chat, rest, relax, figure out what we're doing the next day. Yeah. Okay. You see no sight of your sister um, this okay. evening, um, but you know that she does have other business, presumably, to attend to. Right. The actual ruling business, if that's what she does, it's hard to really say. Um, I'm just going to rest and relax and do some yeah. reading, do some relaxation. Chillax. Chill out. Chillax. Check um, out this new sword. Spend some time with it. Yeah, it's it's showing a little bit of, of wear from being in the water. Mm. But as you look closely at it, you do notice that it's quite thin. Uh, the blade itself is maybe only about an inch, an inch and a half uh, wide. Mm. And when you turn it sideways, it's almost invisible. It's extraordinarily well made. Mm. Um, it's longer than what you would typically use as well. Um, you didn't take the scabbard, you just took the sword, because I think he was holding on to it at the time. Um, so it would be very difficult to kind of put in anything you have right now. Mm. You'll have to figure out a way. Yeah. The blade is is uh, is very sharp and looks like it was well maintained, aside from being in the water for okay. uh, a day or two. Uh, effectively, it's a long sword, okay. plus one, non-magical. All right. Um, it's well crafted. Right. Uh, and on the pommel of the, uh, the sword uh, is a... Uh, metal ball, which has stamped into it some hobgoblin characters. Which okay. You don't think any of you read hobgoblin, so um, you're not familiar with what it says. But it looks like a language or a symbol or Would something. Would it be goblinoid? It does. Yeah, it looks like a thing. Mm -hmm. Would it be goblinoid? It'd be related. Yeah. Okay. Do you know goblinoid? Yes. Oh. <laughs> if you want to take a closer look at it, you certainly can. That's yeah. not the Clark. Clark, Clark wouldn't stop you. Yeah. Can I look at your sword? Yeah, sure. What does it say? Be careful, it's sharp. I make and, sure I don't grab it. And a little blade. rusty, so mm, watch out for that. Have to take so, I'm not done cleaning it yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, uh, it is a stylized symbol mm -hmm. uh, that. Uh, uh, where is the name here? Um, essentially, the translation is uh, Petal of Hydrangea. Oh. Petal of what? Petal of hydrangea. Um, Type of flower. Yeah, I don't know if you have nature trained at all. Uh, possibly. I think I you think might actually. Yeah. I got plus six in nature, but it's not trained. Not trained, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it brings a bell, but you're not really sure. Um, How do you spell the petal of? Uh, petal, P E T A L. I mean, like the That's one that later. Oh, hydrangea, later. H Y D R A N G E A. A E A? Uh, e A. Okay, just E A. Uh, high, yeah, hid range A kind of thing, H Y D range A, um, and it's kind of a strange insignia. It does feel like it's a family name, possibly even a person's name, okay. um, and you you kind of recall a little bit from the uh, the cheeses of Karavenka book, mm -hmm. uh, where there wasn't a lot about hobgoblin society within that. But there was a notion that uh, it was uh, highly structured, and even the way that they described the, the, the cheese making, everything is very carefully laid out, very precise, very much having to do with respect for nature, respect for, for plants, uh, but also extraordinarily structured. Um, and this could be a, almost a, a rank, maybe? Okay. It's hard to tell. What is that hydrangea? Does that ring a bell? I mean, uh, you've not really dealt much, much with this. How goblins yeah, directly? Yeah. Um, is it made out of a particular kind of metal, or is it sort of just 
steel or something? Uh, it's steel. Okay. It doesn't feel flexible, even despite its thin, thin okay. length. So it's it's a well-made steel. Okay. Uh, but very little steel is needed to make something that's that yeah. that um, so thin. It's economical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it is a, a very well-made sword, and it kind of takes you a little bit of back, uh, just because not as a lot is really known about hobgoblins. They are sometimes raiders on on ships that come down. Mm. Uh, they do have some trading, but they don't have a lot of presence in places like a coin. Right. Uh, it would be rare to ever see a hobgoblin, and most of the time they'd be distrusted right. if they were there. They're the um, orcs of this world. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Um, right. They're very insular, yeah. um, from what you can gather. And the only other connection you have to them is on the island of Taraka, where you met a couple of sailors who were there, and they were investigating the uh, embellic and the, uh, mm. the uh, what do we call it, Starseed, I think no. it was called. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't seem they had formal uniforms they did not have the kind of uh, armor that this one was wearing mm-hmm. um, whereas a very stylized and even close up and even you know destroyed somewhat by the quippers that were there um, it did have a very very uh, almost ceremonial mm-hmm. look to it as well as a, as well as frontline armor um, very well made and very very uh, 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 fancy but functional okay and the, the sword kind of fits along those lines Okay. It's got a slight curve to it too on the blade, right. um, but heaving it, you know, the kind of weapons you typically deal with, aside from the uh, glaive itself, mm-hmm. which has almost no weight in a certain way, it has balance but no weight, yeah. which is kind of weird to think about. This one seems to have uh, almost no weight as well, and it's lighter than any other weapon you have, mm. uh, except for maybe a, a, a dagger. Okay. So you spend some time looking at that and probably cleaning it off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he'll, so he'll bring it back to serviceable yeah, condition. Um, the, the strength of the steel is such that it didn't really suffer too much. It yeah. just kind of surface elements of it. Uh, and it gleams very, very prominently once you're done. Okay. Um, after a while, um, you see uh, a cat making noise. Uh, and when you make your way back to find the rest of them sort of yeah. resting for the evening. Um, Quag's mother uh, has retired for the evening. She retired fairly early. She gets up fairly early, so um, she was been up making food long before most of you have woken. Aside, of course, from the elves who don't sleep. But you have a rest, a long rest, in fact. Mm-hmm. Next morning, it seems gray. There's not a lot of light coming in through the small windows they have. It's a little chilly in the air. Cameron has a couple of things he'd like to ask people during various parts of the night. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I assume that, I mean, are we still trading off shifts, or are we bothering with shifts since we're somewhat protected? I mean, Ozera still would, just because habit. Yeah, I mean, the elves don't have much to do beyond that, so it's like, oh, I'm done, I'm going to put her around with her cows. Um, They're used to just staring off into nothingness, admiring mm -hmm. themselves in a mirror if they've got one. (laughs) Now, uh, brushing my hair. Elves have that a, takes like four All hours. elves have a cantrip that creates a mirror in front of these elves. Only they can see it, my job. Mm-hmm. conjuration. I can create a mirror whenever I want. <laughs> um, Show off. <laughs> I'm sleeping though because I need my, a full eight hours. I was going to say, instead of minor illusion, it's minor delusion. <laughs> um, he'll wait. Which of you two falls asleep first? Probably yeah. Clark. He's exhausted. Okay, he's, he's done the most he's, work today. He's been doing yeah. a lot of stuff today. I'll wait for that for the morning. Uh, wait till the two of them are asleep, and uh, probably while Amran's meditating and and uh, Elzera's doing whatever she's doing during the four hours of oh my god, can't these humans wake up? It's <laughs> uh, mild snoring from the other rooms. You hear uh, Quag's mother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometime I gotta see if regeneration would help her joints. But anyway, um, so and as I says, what's up with uh, you and Riarden? He's Cree. I heard. So. It seems a little weird. No. No. Uh, you're a druid. 
<laughs> so how are you feeling? Okay. Uh, I mean, it's not the way I thought I'd find him, but I found him, and yeah. Hmm. Well, life takes strange turns sometimes. You don't know what it's going to give you sometimes. Hmm. So we're bringing him back here, though, aren't we? I don't... I, I think... I think that was what we had discussed with Paturo. Is I we tried to find a way. To. Yeah, he wanted to close things off, and I think we were going to have to bring the tree with us, Don't or else to he was going to do something about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we'll find a way. Uh, we'll return him home, and then he'll go back to his uh, his meditations for a while. Oh, Sarah will just continue brushing her hair. Three hours later, 3,994. I think this is actually the first time that Elzera has had a moment of peace and quiet to actually comb her hair out <laughs> yes. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I could see some luxury going on there, taking that extra moment. Absolutely. Yep. She hasn't been able to, to maintain it at all. <laughs> and you know, seawater does terrible things for the skin. And then he'll, basically he'll wait for some point when he can uh, talk with Clark alone, whether that's later in the morning or if Clark gets up first or whatever. Uh, other than that, he'll just meditate and then uh, do four hours of light praying. Okay. Um, As opposed catching, to ca intense praying. <laughs> Catch Paloxia up on things that are happening. It's like, oh, and then I healed this woman's leg, and they gave me beer, and then I healed this guy's <laughs> fingers, and they gave me more beer. <laughs> they really like to party here. Uh, All right. Well, uh, who is the early riser among uh, Clark? Clark was definitely the, the first he'll to probably, sleep. He'll probably, he's in a relatively safe space. He's done a lot of activity. He'll probably just wake up as late, late as possible. Okay. Mm. So he's kind of waiting for someone to wake him up, maybe? Maybe. Or? He's just happy to take the time and rest. Okay. All right. So that makes uh, Zach is probably the earlier riser. Yep. Um, probably. Like put her around in bed a little bit, just like, there's no really big hurry to wake up. But right. Yeah. We'll get right. up and grab some breakfast. Okay. If there's any. Well, there is already porridge being put on uh, before uh, the two of you have woken up. The other two would have known uh, Gannett coming back in the room and starting... Um, the forage is, is kind of more like uh, rice in some ways than it is oats, um, but very thick, uh, se seasoned with a bit of honey, um, and then there's some, some bread. It's uh, probably not bread, actually. It's probably fruit that's added with it as well. So she started that, and you, kind of probably one of the things that wakes you up is the smell of this. It's not uh, a super strong smell, but it is uh, a comforting smell. Um, and you get the impression that that's probably in some ways how it's made or why it's made the way it is. Okay. Um, but uh, I'm really, you see uh, Zacchaeus stir, um, get it uh, uh, kind of calmly, kind of humming a little bit to herself. She's got some, some cloth that she's mending. Okay. Uh, not really paying much attention to you guys. Okay, I'm going to probably spend those. Uh, well, once again, it gets up, she's starting to uh, get ready to work on breakfast or whatnot. Um, Ammon will bring out the book, uh, the, uh, the cookbook, okay. and a ask her if she can help him with some of these. He doesn't quite understand uh, what... Which cookbook is this? That's this the is one... The yes, it's, mm -hmm. it's the cookbook that teaches uh, cooking, cooking cantrips. Okay. Yeah, Fortescue's. She uh, doesn't know how to read it? Yep, but Ammon will basically say, it's telling me this, this, and this. Because basically, to use the book, it was meant to say he has to actually engage in cooking things. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, that's he'd spend a few hours doing that, okay. uh, using her as guidance because he doesn't know how to cook. She's a, a well. How would you describe her as a teacher? Um, she doesn't 
uh, uh, mince words in her criticisms at all, mm -hmm. but she never seems to be angry about it. It's more, it's kind of like she's used to having to teach younger children and she'll move your hand back mm -hmm. to where it's supposed to be and then grab it again very strongly, more strong than you might imagine for someone of her age, uh, but uh, she seems to be uh, uh, quite capable. And you learn, a, make a, make a, a, let's call it a, a wisdom check. Uh, sure. As trying to to absorb this natural one. Oh, natural no. one. <laughs> the the, mm. the, te the types of cooking that she's doing yeah. is so different from what's learned in the book. The book is so much more formal, and it's about having a full bread basket of, of ingredients. Yeah. And you realize that she has very very few. Um, yep. A lot of her ingredients are also derived from the sea. So fish goes into just about everything. Whereas it's like not really much for grains for for uh, mm. at that. Yep. Whereas abundant fruit is one of the things they have that they, you wouldn't find as in the, in the ingredients as much. So it's difficult. She she seems uh, uh, a little discouraged, but uh, but determined nonetheless. So oh, I uh, thank her for uh, her assistance. I mean we don't do that all too long, and I don't want to delay breakfast. Mm -hmm. uh, and she she tells you that. Um, you made a good try. Try again. <laughs> yes. An attempt was made. An attempt was made. Zakas will be snickering in the background a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Zakas, you've seen uh, the patient uh, Gannett trying to explain, but no. also that that difference of, of kind of what's what's being learned. No, no, other end, other end. No, throw it against the wall harder. <laughs> Part of it is probably things like you need to use a lot of feeling, and she uses feeling as her primary mode of cooking. Mm -hmm. She tastes things from time to time, but it's also about texture and about touch, and not about recipes at all. Uh, recipes are just you know what goes together. Mm. But yes, you hear Zach is snickering. It means he's probably awake or laughing in his sleep again. It's hard to tell. He's having another uh, dream where he runs the library and makes everything do stupid little jobs. <laughs> it's like, aha, clean that book for me. <laughs> well, the unseen servant wouldn't care. <laughs> I make them all unseen servants. <laughs> but you'll look at them, they're unseen. Yeah. Would you like the book? Uh, sure. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> <laughs> that way you know what you need to do to learn it. <laughs> it it's probably going to be a while before you can actually get real time to put towards it, but oh, yeah. he'd be doing little bits anyway. Yeah. So, Zakas was awake. You wanted to talk to him? I wanted to talk to Clark, I think. Yeah. We want to talk to both of you. But is Emerald interested in talking to Zakas or...? Uh, I don't have anything specific for oh, Zakas. okay. And, uh, uh, like, while Emerald does like, whatever, I'll tell Gannett that the uh, breakfast smells delightful and I'll start eating whenever it's ready. Yep. It, she tells you it's going to be a little while, so okay. you get the impression it's very slow cooking, meant to probably break everything down to be being edible uh, and softer. Uh, and you would probably pull out your spell books and start to go yeah. over your spells for the day. Um, probably, I can imagine, too, taking some notes on, on you know, if I, can, if I can do this, then I can possibly do In other words, the spell research necessary yeah. to learn your next set of spells uh, and doing a little bit of that. Um, next awake, although Elzara is already awake, so last awake in some ways, is Clark. Hello. Um, the smell of the food is probably the first that'll, thing. That'll get him off the table. Uh, at this point, she's added a bit of sugar to it. It's a dark brown sugar uh, and is starting to get these, these wooden carved bowls ready to dish it out to all of you, uh, and um, you actually feel her, um, probably her foot actually, uh, shoving you a little bit to wake you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll, they'll uh, get setting, the, setting the bowl down beside you when you see, you see your, uh, your eyes flutter open. Uh, he'll uh, thank her in his best work for her hospitality again, um, and, and dig in. And she replies in, in that sort of almost ritualistic fashion you get when you say something over and over and over again. Um, but there's a, a, a little a little bit uh, of, a, of a, almost a, a weird recognition in the phrase, um, which is, uh, uh, be well, be strong, as the response. Um, which is not, you know, when you literally translate it, it doesn't necessarily make as much sense, but you get yeah. the sense of that being sort of almost a ritual. It's, it's got a poetry to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
and then you guys tuck in. It is it does have fish in it. Uh, it is kind of a rice based uh, uh, porridge almost, very thick, sweetened um, with that that uh, brown sugar, um, and kind of like the much like the alcohol. Um, it kind of sticks a little bit in the inside of your mouth. And you get the impression that this is something that's meant to be digested slowly. <laughs> but you see Clark wake up, start to eat. Mm-hmm. Morning. Rise and shine. Drink food. <laughs> there would be bowls of water there as well. Yep. Okay. Clark might actually take a little bit of time to dip his fingers in and, you know, sort of get the see sleepy seeds out of his eyes yeah there's a little bit of of, of salt as well from mm. you know having been doused in water the night before yeah. and sea salt hopefully Clark get the right bowl <laughs> I mean it's good for cleansing it helps open up the pores yeah, I'll drink some of it. you can you know scrape off the fishier bits and eat them yeah. later mm-hmm. if you want to you can wear your breakfast meal <laughs> so you're gathered there awake and together mm-hmm. Plans for the day. I take it we're not in a rush to uh, attempt to retrieve the cannon again. Although I would like to locate some tritons who could do it for us. Not at all. I think that fighting multiple giant sharks uh, would be a regretful thing to attempt a second time as of yet. Mm -hmm. Plus, we do actually have people being poisoned around the islands that we might want to stop. Right, is your sister around? You mentioned. Uh, I didn't see her yesterday when I came in. I assume she's moved on. Moved she, on. Might, she might be back. I don't know. Hopefully. I she get the distinct impression she, she's doing a tour of some sort, so she may come back this way on her way to somewhere else. Who knows? Sounds good. I was just she, happy to see her. She is our ticket to an easy travel to these villages. Probably. Mind you, I can also... I'll tap room. my pockets to make sure I still again. have the coin. Yep, still got it. Right, I can't lose this. <laughs> I think the actual coin is sitting right there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, it's blocked by the table, so I can't see it. Yeah. It's, no. not, it's not on this side. It's not in... that coin right there? Yep. Oh, okay. Wrong one. It's not in... It, it wasn't in my thing. There's another coin over there? Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that... Oh, no, that's the yes-no coin, isn't yes. it? Yes. Okay. Uh, the dragon one was not in my thing when I opened it. I think I actually physically passed it over, so it should, mm-hmm. be, it should be on that side of the table there somewhere. I'm sure we'll find it later. <laughs> <laughs> it's around somewhere. Um, cause yeah, I, I can make us wind and we can get there quickly. That way. How far away is the next island? Depends so, where you're going. It was over the closest one was over a hill or something, wasn't it? A mountain or something? But well, mountain, like physically closer right. than everywhere else. Mm, there was. Um, so on the opposite side of the island that you're on is Aza, and yes, it would require going over the mountain tops to get there. So yeah. f- straight line distance is the closest. Yeah. Um, the next easiest one, I believe, was Hawaii, I think. Uh, Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hawaii, or yeah, because you'd have to go quite a distance around to get to Stein. Mm-hmm. I'll ask Gannett how far those points are in in real world travel distances how many days walk is that um so as if she would say you rarely go over the mountains you go around Mm -hmm. and that's about a week to get around there but we usually travel that way with all the fish so it takes us longer i don't remember what as it what uh again it sounds like so pardon me Mm. um hawetta you have to cross the sands. So there's a sand shoal. It is an island, but it does not have water around it. Yep. It has sand shoals. Okay. And those are difficult to traverse. Uh, it, difficult to walk, but you can wear shoes. I don't think the wind spell will last long enough. Damn it. For if here... And everyone will point out if here, around to here is seven days walk, then even if we were going straight, that's three days. Uh, At sixty feet per round. Well, on the ground. Yeah. 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 
Uh, yeah, fly speed of 300 feet. Uh, yeah, that's going to be about 10 times faster. For eight hours. Yeah, yeah no, we could, we could just make it just within that uh, mm -hmm. time then, I think. Because, yeah, about a third of a day, which would be around eight hours. So, yeah, we could do that. Uh, Uh, Hoeta would be farther, but for that we don't have to cross the mountain anyways. Um, yeah, she would say that going uh, going up to Untatek from, from Tigatek, which is halfway, roughly, or a little more than halfway to Hoeta, but she describes as halfway, um, is easier if you go by water, because you can take the boats along, along the shores. Mm -hmm. But again, they typically only do that when they're delivering fish. Okay, I didn't realize there was water there. Um, there is water up to about Untatek. Yeah, yeah, I can see the the difference now between the water and the sand. Uh, but to cross over to Huada uh, does require going across the sands, so that's yeah. a lot slower. So it tends to be a lot harder to get there. Slower for normal people. Because if we're not going to do the wind walk, I'll prepare a different spell. Is basically yeah. Well, I'm thinking wind walk would get us to Azza. Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, so yeah, I mean, we could use that to head there and yeah. then uh, teleport back. Um, we to, might want to right. Gannett, uh, does Azza have a village or a, or a settlement that would have supplies and people? It is a winter town. Okay. Uh, and she says that as if that's the whole explanation. Yeah, got it. Okay. Gannett, do they speak uh, the same language you speak. She kind of looks at you puzzled. They are orcs. Um, there are a few then, others, but mostly spoke orc. Then could you teach me a phrase? I can try to teach you. What you are um, a difficult student. <laughs> <laughs> that is as it is. Um, he wants to know how to say, uh, I can heal your wounds, may I? She thinks it over, it's not exactly a, a, a common saying. Or, actually, or specifically, is it, um, I can restore your health. Because what he's doing isn't necessarily wounds, it's okay. stuff like lost feet and whatnot. Um, Clara will speak up. You could probably simplify that to make it easier to remember. Mm -hmm. You know, utter a phrase to the effect of, I'm a healer, can I help? Um, if he explains what uh, that is, he's like, most people who've lost a foot don't think a healer can help anymore. No. Um, that's yeah, why again, I would not that agreement that most do not get feet. Um, but uh, thank you. But yeah, that was that's kind of my worry. There is they might think, oh no, don't bother, you right. can't help. Um, uh, as uh, I found that it can take some work getting people to understand that you can restore lost limbs when you don't speak their language. But yeah, if she can teach him that, he'll actually write it out phonetically in Elven uh, as to uh, how to say it, and he'll practice it till she's satisfied that he can say it. Do do orcs uh, as a culture have uh, any ritual scarring? Or like, or do they value battle scars, that sort of thing? Um, or, or no? Uh, yes, there's no hiding or or or, um, or getting rid of scars. Um, lost limbs are a little bit different because it like makes you a little less yeah. less, less effective. Uh, capable, less effective. Yeah. Um, makes you more vulnerable and yeah. right. Obviously, yeah. um, although that can also, depending on how it goes, can also be used as part of that. 
torn here is nothing. Uh, Clark will mention yeah. that. It's like some people may not want to be healed for reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why he wanted to to a- uh, to ask. Yeah, uh, yeah. He said, "I'm still sorry about the eye." It was allowed to happen, so mm-hmm. I guess it's fine. That's yeah. That's how gods go. Um, so she she under something which. Your understanding of, of the Orcish language is a little more literal, mm-hmm. a little more functional, whereas this gets a little bit more more lyrical. Um, he starts rap battling it. <laughs> no, if I could do that, I would. Uh, but no, uh, there is a bit of a of a of a of a, a rhythm to the Orcish language, which you would have seen expressed in part by the drummers uh, when they start to get into it. And there's a bit of a, the rituals chant, um, but it's not quite like that. Um, the phrase that she gives you. Is Brazunga il durbet no? So B A R A Z dash U N G A I L dash D U R B E T dash N O. And the literal translation is something close to um, spirit memory. Sacred Weaver Return. And that phrase, she tells you, along with you know some of the other common words that, that uh, you would be familiar of, familiar with uh, uh, Clark, uh, does get the essence, essence of returning what was lost to you mm. as part of your spirit is being returned. Right. And she tries to explain the concept kind of of the the lost and missing limbs is as though your spirit has been cut from you and all you're doing is not restoring the limbs not regrowing the limbs but uh, but unsevering that cut and that seems to be the way they'll be a little more comfortable with it okay um, thank you do you want me to make a roll to see how well he doesn't remember that uh, Clark can help him out like uh, now, now that he's heard it said properly Exactly. Sure. Yeah, and, and it's it's more metaphorical too, which mm. you know didn't quite. Um, okay, I didn't get a one this time. Yeah, <laughs> you will remember it phonetically, certainly, uh, uh, Zacchaeus. Um, but there's one more part of that, and she tells you to um, introduce yourself uh, as Il Polox Unga. Which translates roughly to uh, the sacred memory of a healer. Okay. And again, you hear the name Pollux in there, which you feel is probably derived from yeah. history. As in, I am Il Pollux Unga, or I am a Il Pollux Unga? The first. Okay. myself here. Uh, um, and she has you repeat it several times and, and a bit of correction each time in terms of the, the exact pronunciation. The words feel a little bit difficult to to pronounce. Uh, unga in particular doesn't come from the front of the mouth, it comes from right down in the throat. Um, and it, it almost, you almost have to close off your throat in order to pronounce it. So there's a little bit of trickiness. It takes you no time to pronounce it, but the phrase is unfamiliar to you. Mm-hmm. It would not have been one you encountered really before. And even in this one, there's not a sense of appealing to a god. There's not a sense of appealing to uh, magic as such, so much mm-hmm. as these are things that are natural and disconnected, yeah. and you are weaving them back together. Sure. Cool. But she, she nods, and I have heard what you have done already. It is impressive. You're good at that. Keep doing it. <laughs> Someday I will be a great chef doctor. <laughs> <laughs> F- focus on the healing. Cooking's not your thing. <laughs> Try not to get the two confused. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to cook your hand and make you feel tasty. I can grow it back. <laughs> Now that gives a weird sort of cannibal notion. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so if we're ever like stuck, if we're ever stuck in the woods and starving, and somebody just 
Mm -hmm. it's a there's, there's a whole Monty Python by. sketch in there somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'd oh. rather eat him. He tastes better. <laughs> the the druid with Goodberry is just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can well, conjure food anyway. He offered. <laughs> Would you like the blue pill or the red flesh? <laughs> All right. There are so many other ways we can go around this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can literally God. make food and yeah. water. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather just eat your arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, as everyone's watching, he just conjures a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> level one spell, level yeah. seven spell. <laughs> uh, fresh meat versus bland. 40 years in the desert. I'll take the meat. All mm -hmm. right. Enough of this weird cannibalistic sideshow. <laughs> what happens next? You guys are, are full. Uh, the meal leaves. There's a little bit of an oil in from the fish that's being used uh, that kind of coats the uh, the lips when you're done, leaving a bit of an after aftertaste. But otherwise, it's it's mostly just filling and warm and sweet. You find yourselves un unaccounted for. Um, Quag has not appeared today because you didn't say you wanted to go back out. He probably has gone back out with the fish all, with the boat already. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the simplest way it would be to wind walk. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, especially where we're also not dealing with, you know, dragons mm -hmm. <laughs> and trying to avoid that. Um, I think just flying over would be the easiest. Um, Teleportation would be faster, but this is only possible if Agma returns in time. So wind walking seems to be the best option. Yeah. To the closest one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to see what's going on there. Yeah. Is there anyone who would know where your sister would have gone to as the next part of her tour? We can ask around before we leave. Yeah, because then. I mean, we can ask. My brain is blanking on names. Oh, Ganon? Yeah. Ganon? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, if you if you mention it while she's there, um, yeah. she will say that, so far as I know, the leader left this morning, traveling back to Ungatuk. Yeah. Oh, this could take a while. Uh, are there any dangerous creatures or magical creatures on top of these mountains? And I'll point to the mountains where we're planning on going over. They are sacred mountains, and there are dangerous things there. Okay. Most of us do not go. All right. Only those who are the guardians go. If we were to be flying in a mist form, would anything bad happen? She looks at you puzzled. Y you, we do that kind of thing sometimes. <laughs> I have should. never flown as any form of mist or bird. We should be fine. All right. So what town are we in? Tegatech. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, yeah, okay, so she went north. Well, she okay. went towards the capital-ish, didn't she? She went to Untetek as the next town yeah. upward. And, yeah. um, Which would be... And Gannett also would have said that that was with a, you know, traveling with a caravan of fish, basically. Yeah. The, the yeah. Previous yeah. Loads. And that's actually in the direction of Hoeta. Yeah. So if we return here and then head north yeah. next time, then uh, we might be able to catch her there. Mm -hmm. You also do see from the map that uh, Baraz Lek is in the middle of the mountains. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, north and middle, yeah. But I don't think that's one of the ones that was marked. It off. is not. Okay. No, there's pink marks on the ones. Yeah. Uh, yep. Eight hours traveling this wind sounds fine to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you finish breakfast, gather your things. Pack a lunch. Pack, are you packing a lunch? Yeah. Okay. Give Gannon mm -hmm. some thanks again. Dry, yeah. Dried fish is yeah. what <laughs> Gannon has on hand. Yeah, he'll, um, he'll offer something in return, whatever she thinks is appropriate. She doesn't ask for anything. Okay. Um, kind of looks at you puzzled in some ways. And you get this notion, like, there's never been in, in any site you've seen in here any exchange of money mm -hmm. or even of favors. Um, they're living completely like a family. Uh, and... There's not even any sort of notion of commerce from what you've seen. Right. Um, so she seems a little, even a little puzzled with the idea. Very alien. And you, and you get the sense, like, having kind of grown up and been around Equine and places like that, which are exact opposite, Equine is very cutthroat. Yeah. It, it, it's a lot more like the smaller druid circles. Yeah, yeah. Just take even care the grove itself 
Yeah. Um, it's very much like that. There's not really any discussion of the, in in the other area where the kin folk are. Yeah, that is where kind the of that mer- commerce merchants, market is. But, like, but that's also commerce with the outside world and the kin folk. Yeah. But inside the grove, no one even questions it. No one thinks of it. Have a look, anarcho socialists. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We prefer to be not go sing. No, anyway. Uh, another Monty Python joke to try to fit in there. Mm-hmm. I never understood those phrases when they were in there, but it was still funny for some reason. Anyway. Um, so, wind walk it is. All right, you gather outside. Are you going to do this just on the outside of the... the are you going to do it inside the house for that matter? Or are you going to do it outside? What would you like to do this? We might want to do it outside mm-hmm. the house. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so we don't inside. blow over all our stuff. <laughs> uh, I mean, if... We become a tornado. Yeah. I mean, if we do this in the town, it will impress the locals. Uh, if we do it outside of town, it won't scare the locals. <laughs> <laughs> Let's focus on that. Yeah. Mm. We've made I'd a like good to be able to come so back far. here someday. Mm. Well, I know they like me. They probably <laughs> like the rest of us, too. Uh, I mean, we've done cool stuff. You killed a shark. Uh so we're walk we're wind walking to where, sorry? Uh Aza. Aza? As a? Yeah, that's the closest. So when you step outside, you've noticed a little bit of it already, but the, the air is immediately colder. Uh, seasons are turning rapidly. And that's probably also another reason why they seem to be so intent on getting as many fish and smoking them and getting ready and sending out on a daily basis a caravan to one town or another. I do ask, um, is there anyone in Aza that you know that you'd like a message passed to just while we're going there huh. or anything you'd like us to bring. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gannon shakes her head. I, I have never been. Would you like something returned from there? She thinks for a minute. Um, yes, yes. There is a spice I cannot get. Name it. It is red. I don't have a name for it. Red pie. Uh, oh. Yeah, sure. Uh, it translates as red tide. Okay. Um, it is a, a, uh, a kind of uh, leaf-based herb that you can't get, okay. which is usually dried and then ground up into a spice. Um, I'll see what I can do. So, uh, is this something we should bring trade for, such as fish? I mean, they may not have a use for any coinage that we have. I'm sure we could do a favor over there. Sure. Bartering. If they need something, they will ask. If they do not need something, they will not ask. If we cure their If, if we fix children, their problems, we can ask. ask for that instead of yeah. more beer. <laughs> um, sure, I think... Uh, yeah, get my hit points back, too. Yeah, I mean, right. ready to go. Yeah. HP. Yeah. You gather yourselves together. You cast the wind walk spell. What does it look like when you cast wind walk? You really ask that. Um, I think it is more of a whirlwind. Most of the time, my spells are more on the green side, like the effect. But this would be more of like this color of green, where it's more like a bit of a blue tinge to it. Okay. Um. And it's just like a whirlwind around each person. Um, I, I'd say that it goes around each person individually and then around the group. Okay. As this wind sort of threads its way through and sort of flows through each person, you can feel yourself becoming less substantial. Actually, you feel the, the, the potential there. But all of you know you need to focus on it to allow it to really flow through you and allow all of your body to, to dissolve into this, this wind. As you stand there and you allow this to, to happen and kind of have to remain still, uh, just because in some ways you have to let yourself go for this to really happen. Um, the cool air starts to flow around you and then through you and then is you. Uh, and then you feel yourselves kind of uh, dissolving into the breeze. There is a bit of, of a breeze, there is cold air, it's an overcast day, kind of gray, and within a minute, I would have also grabbed some of those rations yeah. for food. She would have else. them wrapped yeah. up in, in, in uh, large palm leaves, essentially, for each of you. Right. Almost as though she has made this kind of thing for dozens of people over time. Uh, probably does it for many of the, the caravans as well. 
Yeah, and you find yourself in the bank of preservation of people one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. You find yourselves flying. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to tell direction because there is no sun clearly through the the, uh, the clouds. You have a good sense of yeah. direction. It's difficult to communicate that. We should probably follow him. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll move towards the place on the map where we have to be. Okay. Yeah. As you head quickly away from the village, the trees grow from the kind of, of uh, tropical, almost palm tree, which you see mostly towards the coast, into thicker and thicker trees that are um, hardy, but never really that tall. The tallest you see are maybe 30 feet tall. And at that point, their trunks are a lot more massive than you would expect for a tree uh, of that of that size. Um, for you, Elzara, you can kind of tell that the winters are harsh here and the growing season is short. So these trees maximize the amount of, of space they have, but never grow too high. You can also see that there are a few of them falling as people are harvesting them, presumably to make a few more boats. So you see small camps of orcs. Um, with it, rather impressive looking wood axes. Um, not the kind of axe that you would use for any kind of battle. They're not adorned, but they have massive uh, heads, almost three feet uh, on one side. Mm. And you see one of the larger orcs who takes a swing at one of the, one of the trees and nearly topples it in a single strike. Um, the amount of strength, even from the perspective you have, uh, you can tell that that orc was probably nine feet tall, maybe. Uh, and uh, if he had struck someone with that, it would have killed them. Um, but the fact that they're here to you feels a little bit weird. Because if the orcs are at war, why is that person here? Yeah. So it raises a little bit of a question. Further in, you see from your perspective, how far high up are you flying, by the way? Are you staying an inch from the ground? Are you going 100 feet? High enough, like a uh, probably like. I'd stay above the treetops yeah. to try mm -hmm. to exactly. not like have police interference and be able to see where, where yeah. we're going. Yeah. yeah, to be able to see landmarks basically, and uh, just to look around more to get a bigger, a better view. Because like this is brand new to Zacchus, and he's like, oh, cool. And, and hopefully those sacred avoid sites. Things. Yeah, <laughs> and those sacred sites, like he wants to see those too. Like, okay. So we won't disturb it. We'll just like float over it. As you float higher and higher and, and kind of float quickly over, um, those sort of logging camps become a little more permanent the deeper in you go. Uh, you get the impression that they probably build, much like what they have towards the shore, a semi-temporary structure they live in for a few months while they're gathering and then ship everything back out. There are not a lot of roads. In fact, you do see a couple of caravans dragging things along, but there are no wheeled vehicles because the ground is too uneven. So they're usually using creatures or themselves or carrying their loads. Um, so nothing really like large, massive roads, but well-worn paths that seem to follow natural features uh, all along the way. The mountain looms in front of you. And uh, it goes quite high up. You can see snow on the very top of the mountain. Uh, probably taller than Demarac, maybe even uh, taller than uh, twice as much as tall as Demirak, which is the the uh, the, uh, the, um, the mountain on Vatur Dren, mm -hmm. which sits beside the city and encases the city of Dren. Um, as you get closer, you see more less temporary uh, camps. This time, mostly made out of stone, a little bit of wood here and there. Um, you see them. There is a small mining operation on the side of the the mountain. It uh, doesn't seem to be that active, however. Mm -hmm. um, you get the impression that they don't do a lot of mining, uh, or maybe the, the hills aren't really all that valuable to them. Um, climbing up uh, to kind of see the summit and get over the mountainside, presumably still staying like 100 feet above yeah. the mountainside rather than staying at a level and, and f flying closer and closer to the mountain. Uh, it is indeed covered with snow. You see some wildlife going around you see actually a hunter um, who seems to be on their own um, dressed in in uh, heavy furs uh, rough looking furs and fires off a bow and arrow and the arrow has got to be at least three feet long with slices right through the the heart of a moose 
and the moose kind of stalls and topple, topples over. Um, when you, the person walks up to the moose, um, you can see that while moose are very, very tall, this one again would be very, very tall, and they stop. And the uh, bald but bearded orc looks up to the wind where you are traveling, almost as though they are seeing or thinking they're seeing someone passing by. You know that you should not be perceived in that form, really. It's very, very hard to see you unless you make yourself be seen. Uh, coming into the sort of for firm pattern, um, you see them uh, uh, pull out another arrow uh, and just sort of prep it to be to be cautious to see if anything is coming towards them. Presumably you don't stop. No. no. Um, at some point after that has happened, uh, Amrin will try to message Clark with that interconnected message thing that we have from the from that he's not sure if it works so he'll just give it a try the Clark uh, the voice is very uh, limited in this point because I don't think it was was it telepathic I forget yeah it's yeah. a okay. it's a mental link yeah in that case the, then you yeah you hear it easily there's a voice okay. in my head mm -hmm. that actually that makes this this way of travel even mm -hmm. more useful mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, no more my main. You're also mm -hmm. noticing that when you get up to this level, the air is getting very cold, to the point where it's going to start being very dangerous to stay in this high high altitude for very long. No, well, we are at the top, right? That means we're just going down, right? Uh, you're, you're approaching the top. Okay. Um, it's a lot higher than you kind of expected. The map doesn't really show you how high it is. Mm. Well, let's go as fast as possible, like we have been. <laughs> Are you okay? Do you have a death wish? If you don't want to talk about it, that's <laughs> fine. I thought I might bring it up. This in like after the twenty-five word. <laughs> with the sharks. Well, uh, since we've got it unlimited, I'm yeah. assuming we just go twenty-five and then. I'm not twenty-five. Sure, how to answer that to a satisfying degree. You went after that shark with great ferocity. Uh. When we started to leave, you stayed behind to fight it. That seems like an unwise thing. I'm just wondering if there's something you might want to talk about that's going on, or... Uh, call it a matter of faith. Were you trying to see if, you're, if uh, Marius would keep you alive? No. He decides either way. It's not a... It's not something you can petition. No, what was the fate then? I don't know. But apparently I'm the shark killer now. Mm hmm. Mm. <laughs> nice name. I guess. I mean, forgive me, call it something. Better shark killer than, I don't know, tub fumbler. Yeah. I knew a tub fumbler in high school. Uh. No, I, 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 I've I, died many times. I may die a few more before this is all over. You've come close to dying. You didn't die. The world went black. That's death. And sleep. That's a small death. Philosophically, I can see the point. From the perspective of uh, a healer, I can tell you that you were not dead. You were just close. But... Are you testing? I'm always yourself? testing. That's how you get better. Hmm. Until you don't. If Marius wills it, you don't. So far, I've caught his favor. I understand that feeling, certainly more than the others would. But Marius seems to be a god of sometimes things go great and sometimes things go really badly um, okay thank you I will try to have a better answer for you later I'll think about it if you wish I mean I just want to make sure that you're okay that there isn't something perhaps driving you to distraction or destruction. 
Not as of yet. Good. <laughs> I said that to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone else feeling cold? Yes. I should have put on my jacket before I left. And it can become a wind jacket. A wind Do we want to land and get warmer? I mean, how to... much further away does it look? I mean, you're about probably halfway over the mountain at this point. So we're around the peak of the mountain? You can over. see the peak ahead of you. Uh, it seems to move further higher uh, north from where you are. It's almost, a, mm. not quite a valley, but a, a dip, yeah. if you will. Okay. I you're don't also know, fighting I... the wind a little bit and finding yourself slowed a little bit as you get higher. This, Although the air is thinner, and you can kind of feel that as well, there's a lot more force as the winds themselves are, mm. are more wild and colder. Okay. I mean, we might want to go a little closer to the ground, but I think if if we push on and get past the peak, then it's going to warm up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we stop for now, we're going to kind of be stuck here for a while. Yes, we were able to handle the cold for at the like ten of the ocean. minutes, like a minute to change, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, yeah, it's a minute yeah. to change, then enough to like throw an extra layer on, and then. Do I mean, clothes, it, like, actually keep us warm if we're all in wind form? Questions of the day. I'm not really sure if that's going to change anything. Okay. You are uh, feeling the cold, however. Yeah. It's uh, a yeah. little bit distant, which but it does mean that it's going to be extraordinarily cold. Yeah. I mean, that's that's up to you. If you want to stop and, and uh, yeah. reclose, then, yeah, I don't have a... I'm not too worried about that. So, well, it, it's more of a suggestion if we're finding it too cold. It's bearable right now. Soon we'll be out of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I guess we get going then. Yeah. Zoom, zoom. As you climb higher, you do see less and less trees, but you do see more and more animals. Uh, there's, a, 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 well, speaking of bears, you do see a uh, what looks like three or four bears um, chasing through the, the snow. Uh, looks like they're heading towards the mountain. In fact, you see them dip into a cave in the mountain. What color um, bears? Uh, white, actually. I would be distracted. Okay. Uh, and I'd follow them a little bit. Like, if I noticed them, I, I would... Oh, you definitely noticed. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I figure you're always on the lookout mm -hmm. for, for creatures. Yeah. Uh, th that would be something that I would... It's like, oh, Aaron, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps we should... Uh, well, I mean, actually, if you want to stop and do that now, you could watch them while the rest of us yeah. change into warmer stuff. Yeah. I, I think we've lost in Hulzera for the moment. <laughs> Why? New animal. Oh. Then I'll notice it. <laughs> well, they're actually gone at the moment. Okay. They dipped into the, oh, oh, yeah, but the it, mountainside at this point, but you yeah. know where they went. Yeah, like, if I saw them, I would, like, start looking at them and okay. watching them. Are you going to follow As, them into the cave, or...? I, I would have followed them to the cave okay. to, to watch them. Yeah, the cave seems to turn almost immediately when you go in. Yeah. It looks a lot deeper than you expected. It's not a shallow yeah. cave. Well, I, I don't go into the cave. Like, I follow them to, to the cave okay. to see if I can understand anything from them. The but. cave is large, but they've disappeared out of view. They've gone yep. presumably deeper inside. Uh, the rest yeah. of the people are just hanging around, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't go into it to a random cave. So if they start to to deform to get warmer, I will if not. I'll go back to the group. Okay. So it's basically. How much colder would it be without wind form? I'm wondering. <laughs> Hard to say. Uh, dispel. <laughs> how cold is it? You bastard! No. <laughs> no. This is, how we, through you though, yes. <laughs> this is how we all end up walking. <laughs> if so. we stop for a few minutes, do we have enough? Does the spell last long enough for us to get to our destination? We're really close. Well, the spell lasts for eight hours. Eight, eight hours. Eight hours. So. I mean, it, yeah, it should get us. If we dash a few times, it'll get us. Yeah. For it. Oh, I suppose we can well, actually, stop. I don't think you have dash actions anymore. Okay. The only action you could take is move, I think. Um, oh, a few minutes can yeah. So you can move, you can use the move action. Oh, no, action, you can do the dash action. Yeah, okay, sorry. Which would be... Yeah. Uh, and either way, I mean, it's... Yeah. If we, if we end up changing back a bit short of the town, that's 
you know, we can still walk for an extra. We'll probably want to stop before we get inside of the town anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just so we don't suddenly <laughs> appear <Yeah>. and... Uh, <laughs> I'm taking over the town! Ah! <laughs> all the giant orcs. Mm -hmm. So, you're taking off once again? Yep. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to find out what's going on. <laughs> Basically, she would follow them to the, to the cave. She wouldn't go into the cave and then go okay. back to the group. Okay. So they she, don't seem to be coming out again. Yeah. Um, She'd try to get a better look at, at them, but if it, that requires going into the cave, she wouldn't. Make a nature roll, actually. Two? Yeah, so that comes to uh, 11. Okay. Yep, yeah, no, they, they were just moving quickly into the cave. Yep. If we were to stop for a few minutes, I'm fairly certain we could reach our destination, or at least close. Yeah. Would more clothes actually affect us if we're in a I don't form? know. No. No, no, I'm not a caster. No, I am a caster. I'm not a caster. <laughs> I lost my brain hack. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose we could stop for a few minutes. And there's a cave right there, so warming up, warming up should be easier. It's a cave full of bear. Is it? Mm -hmm. Easy? Yeah. That's where the bears went. Well, that's okay. where the bears went. She doesn't right. see any bears at the moment, but... Well, if you guys want to stop... I'm no? fine with going on. Yeah, all right. Let's go on. All right. You take off once again, flying higher and higher. Uh, the winds, again, are strong. And, in like, fact... Again, I think we're, we're traveling closer to the ground yeah. this time, though, I think. So you yeah. are moving a lot closer, or how close? Like 50 feet instead of 100. Okay. Yeah. There's not as many trees here, so it's not really a tree line mm -hmm. to keep above, but yeah. it's mostly open open ground. Um, Do I see anything that looks sacred? <laughs> I mean, everything is sacred to somebody. All right. <laughs> Hashtag you're traveling uh, with the druid. <laughs> but <laughs> you see nothing which looks uh, made by, by mortal hands. Okay. Or anything constructed. It looks as though the mountain, in some ways, is pristine, uh, and that might have to do with the fact that it's got a fairly sheer surface on one side. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of vegetation. There are a few caves you see here and there. Um, uh, everybody, make a perception check, though. Sure. As you're moving along, <laughs> we get attacked by dragons. Jeez, I cannot roll today. And then 19. 20. 19. 17. 12. That's all pretty good. You're still looking for things like that angle, like a right angle. Is that like a built thing? Uh, it's probably just basalt or something else that, that forms these natural right angles. Um, the rest of you kind of take a glance towards the north, where the higher peak is. Um, and while it doesn't look as though it's constructed, um, it looks like a solid mountainside with, with uh, snow covering it. There is a tree growing on the top of that mountainside, which is kind of unusual, fairly large tree. Um, and in the shadow of that tree, um, you got a 21? 20. 20. 20. Um, you actually see a figure sitting in the tree. It's mostly obscured, uh, and it, it you don't really notice until a little bit of snow falls from one limb to another and kind of briefly opens up a window and you see that uh, a, a person, it's impossible to tell what they look like otherwise because they mostly seem to be robed up in, in furs maybe. So almost like an animal, but distinct, distinctly sort of humanoid in shape. Oh. There's someone in that tree. What? Up there. Stop, look over. Do I see anything? Uh, no. Now you see the tree, and you see that on the top of the mountainside. And this is this mountainside is probably another hundred feet above you, uh, and at least a couple hundred feet away to the north. Okay. Um, the winds now are buffeting you even stronger. You find yourself moving at half speed, just trying to keep from not being blown completely off course. Wind is whipping up loose snow, making visibility a little bit harder. In fact, as you start to look, it is almost as though it gets thicker and a strange sort of fog almost uh, happens from the, the light snow being being blown around you. Are you sure? It's much colder. Never. Each of you make a constitution saving throw. Did you say constitution or constitution? Okay. No. Fourteen. Nineteen. Uh, dirty twenty. Eight. Eight. Uh, you guys both save. 
you two have one level of exhaustion God, damn it. as the cold mm -hmm. and blowing against and pushing against the wind is now starting to take its its toll on you. You can't really feel your fingers and your, your toes, your the end of your nose is starting to get a bit cold and everything just feels as though you're getting almost solidified in ice. Is this magical? Like, does it feel magical? Make an arcana check. 20 would be nice if I wasn't exhausted. 18 plus 14, 14. to like 34. <laughs> so you think for 32. a moment and, and you don't know much about ecology. I have not much about history books. There's a whole thing in there. Anyway, uh, but this feels unnatural. And um, the pattern the wind is f funneling in, there's no reason that it should funnel this way. Yeah. It feels magical to you. I'll let my companions know that this storm is magical. What did you see? Did it look like a caster? It looked like a man dressed in furs. That's about all you can tell. Hiding in a tree. And at this point, you can barely even tell that because yeah. the, the snow has gotten thicker around you. Okay. Can you point us to him? It's in a tree. I mean, so I guess we, we can't all. see each other, so. Yeah. You're near invisible. You're not actually invisible. Okay. Um, the fact that you can hear each other is kind of weird because there's no co-location with the voice. So the voice just sort of appears and you can be in front or behind or anywhere else. Let's rise up out of the storm so we can see where we're going. So you start to rise up. What about the rest sure. of you? Sure. Okay. As I you go 600 feet up and forward. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you rise 600 feet, uh, you start to lift out of this this uh, sort of sudden blizzard that was surrounding you. The air continues to get actually colder and colder as you go higher. Um, but you see the below you now, as you all rise up out of it, there does seem to be a, a location which is just swirling in wind where you were, uh, but does not seem to be following you. It does not seem to be... Uh, continuing anywhere else. From here, you can now look down upon the tree, uh, and I'll have you make another perception check. Oops, where my dice go? Jeez, I cannot roll above a 10, apparently, other than for that one roll. Oh, yeah, I forgot we got disadvantage. The 18 went yeah. nice Yeah. I got a 14. 14. 14. 21. 21. 10. 10. The three of you are kind of uh, focused as much on the wind and just sort of moving. Mm -hmm. And the cold is really affecting the two of you uh, the most roughly as you feel yourself starting to shiver a little bit as wind. Yeah, I don't um, care if there's a guy, I'm just moving. You think you see motion okay. from the limb that, it, that that person was on, and then nothing. Mm. Uh, it doesn't really seem like it's worth mentioning. So okay. well. Nothing. So you've gone upward. Are no. you moving towards the peak mm -hmm. at this point as well? Or I'll be moving that peak. direction? Mm -hmm. Well, we were, I was going to just get out of the storm to begin with. So the rest of you just rising straight up? Yeah. or sure. Yeah. If, if nobody sees anything, then we might as well continue. Okay. Um, as you fly closer, you're looking down upon this tree. Um, it looks like a snowy, snowy landscape uh, with this peak. Um, the peak seems to be about... 50 feet long from where it started, from where that point is and where the tree is, um, and just covered in thick snow. Mm hmm Yep, yeah, I go over it. Okay. At, at 500 feet above it, you don't really see much. Mm-hmm. I'm not even looking for anything. Okay. I'm just moving. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll continue moving as well. To where are you moving? Our, 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 well, towards our original destination. Okay. Yeah. I'm just like, I as much as... I'm curious about what someone's doing up mm -hmm. here. We can always come back later after we've. Do we have a job? Yes. Yeah. Someone in Azza might know more than we do too. Exactly. <laughs> zoom so. zoom. So are you regathering with them then? Because yeah. you kind of went north, where they're going all east. No, I went east. Oh, okay. I thought you were moving towards the peak, I which was north of you. I'm going to. I'm going over the tallest part of the mountain that's on our destination. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm continuing on. You don't, you don't on. have to go over that peak to get there. You're rather, there's a lower spark yeah. right for you. Okay. No. You you move on to the other side. The other side is more sheer, um, almost a, a, almost a, a like a ten degree uh, uh, slope, if that's one way to put it. I guess 
um, where it would be impossible to climb. You would have to <coughs> climb it with ropes and be very, very long and extended uh, journey to do so. Or be a mountain goat. Um, possibly. You don't see any actual like livestock or anything along there. Uh, actually, sorry, I'll take that back. You do see a bird that flies in and has a high nest that's there. Hmm. Uh, makes a screaming noise, which means it's clearly not an eagle because they don't make that sound. Um, and you fly down, you can see uh, that sheer drop leads down to a lower forest beneath you. You see some water coming out of one part of the mountainside. It's a, a free flowing waterfall that flows downward. And below you, far below, you see what you presume is as a, it looks like a fairly large settlement uh, made out of stone. Uh, stone buildings, most of them fairly squat, right up against the side of the mountainside. Um, from this height, it looks mostly just gray stone with white snow on top. Um, it's actually considerably higher than the uh, beach side you would do on the other side, so it'll still be fairly cold when you get there. Um, it was described as a winter home. Okay. Um, but maybe winter a lot longer than you realize. Uh, you can also see at this point uh, towards the, 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 the shore and you can see there's a large dock and sort of the extension of the village. Here there is not a road as such, but a, uh, a well actually it would be kind of a road. It's a stone pathway, essentially that extends all the way from the water to the uh, to the uh, the buildings that are there. You mm -hmm. see a fairly bustling population. From where you are and as you kind of move closer, you can see that it is presumably, or, or not presumably, primarily orc. But you do see some rather tall humans, pale skin, uh, and it puts you in mind of Paul, okay. uh, who said he came from Striendek, which is the islands beyond the Orcs, uh, part of the island chain that's between the Orcs and the uh, Hobgoblins. They seem to be fairly busy hauling in things in the boats that are uh, by the water. Uh, you see one thing you notice right away, um, just outside of the town, uh, looks to be essentially a military encampment. Okay. Uh, looks like much more temporary buildings made of, of wood, and there are uh, drills going on. Uh, the drills aren't formal lineup as such. Mm. They're more like football drills, and that you go through and you do your part, you take the challenge, Formations and, and then you move off. You take yeah. the challenge and move off. Uh, occasionally it stops, and there are uh, battles going on uh, between two particularly hot-headed uh, warriors that are there. Uh, and they see everybody seems to stop and wait for the battle to be over rather than stepping in hmm. uh, almost as though there's a bit of, of rank challenging or something like that going on with them for the most part they're using non-bladed weapons during these these challenges and even just bare fists at times um, but you see that the the size of these military uh, military members tends to be a lot taller it's both men and women seems to be uh, uh, indistinguishable in many ways, not wearing a lot of clothing, despite the fact that it's much cooler up here. Although what clothing they do have is seems to be mostly furs. And you do see some of again the sort of tall, pale humanoids as well, uh, fighting alongside those those orcs. Uh, probably about a hundred of them there hmm. in total. Um, and there are kind of more experienced people who seem to be watching over them, giving them direction. Even while they're having their own private fight, mm -hmm. they're still giving them instruction. Uh, almost as though it's sort of a practical demonstration of the thing they're going to be getting involved with. You see one of the fights come to its conclusion, and uh, the one who's the victor still standing reaches down with a large meaty paw and uh, lifts the other person up. And there's a sort of uh, acknowledgement of the victory, even begrudging as it might be. Um, from the dock side, you see them bringing in uh, what looks like barrels of different things. Uh, it's impossible to tell. The barrels are all closed for the most part as they're coming in, um, but mostly on uh, sleds rather than wheeled vehicles, um, taking advantage of the snow and actually most of the time dragging them beside the pathway rather than actually on it. Um, but it does seem to be quite a busy town. You see smoke rising up from chimneys in different places that are here. But it's about from the perspective of the other side, about halfway down the mountain. Okay. So considerably higher. So there's still snow in the ground or anything? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where should we change back? Somewhere outside of view. Yeah. Okay. What kind of place were you looking for? Somewhere in the woods. Okay. Yeah, Somewhere in the, the woods, way. but possibly like not too far from a road, so we can just like 
pretend we got there from the only road. real road is the one that runs from the dock into the middle of town okay so there are smaller pathways where people have, have taken things fairly close uh, to the the town itself uh, is sort of mostly stumps probably where they were doing some clearing this year for uh, these military encampments okay um, each of you make a survival check on that actually Twenty-two. Twelve. Natural twelve. Oh. Eleven. Okay. The two of you, first of all, the thing you notice is that the trees nearest to the village have been cut down. Mm -hmm. um, but from what you observed before, they don't usually do that kind of clear cutting. Um, mm -hmm. That is either specifically because they're trying to expand space, or they desperately needed those trees sooner rather than later. What they were doing on the other side was very much selective cutting. They were just taking a few trees here and there of what they needed. For you, it's it's immediately obvious that the military is not a permanent thing here. Mm. Whatever reason they happen to be gathering here, they needed the, to, to house them here, they were preparing for something, or they needed to do it in a hurry. So they took the nearest trees, mm. uh, big and small, and made them part of the encampment. Right. So you land somewhat distant away. Um, as you flutter down through the trees, dislodging a little bit of snow here and there, uh, a few birds fly out of, the, out, of the, out of the way. They can kind of tell the change in the wind, if not that there's specific creatures that are there. And then you come down and land, and then you start to transform back into your solid forms. The first thing you notice right away is how cold your feet feel standing on the snow. Uh, and unfortunately, it takes you a minute just kind of increasingly getting colder and colder. Uh, and yeah, presumably as soon as you can, you pull out the delightful orc jacket that you've got, your, your, your orc pimp jacket uh, <laughs> of the delightful uh, light fur. It gives advantage versus cold, too. Cool. Yep. Hashtag cold resistance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. as, you, uh, as you all kind of come back to your forms. You can hear um, different animals moving through the woods. A deer pauses for a moment, but as, it, as you sort of take on more structured form, it dashes away pretty quickly. Uh, a squirrel kind of looks at you from a tree nearby, seeming more curious than afraid. Um, and you start to hear more clearly the sounds of the, the town, the shouting of the generals who are, are organizing the, the fighting going on, uh, sounds of wood still being cut down, uh, sounds of general commotion going on. Not not any sort of tense or, or fearful one, just general shouting back and forth. And you return back to your forms. It's cold. Ah, I hate this. I grab the bag of holding from you and start digging through my clothes and grab like the thickest things I have and throw them on. Putting on layers. Uh, and I also start wrapping my hair in a way that like covers my ears. Okay. I just pull my cloak around me Take and it tie it right around your face. I'm generally miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was getting to be chilly at the the, the water side, but this is a distinctly different level of chill. Uh, going back to something I used to do in the old days, uh, warm his robe, warm his jacket, warm her robe or jacket, whatever she's wearing. I have a cloak. <sighs> It only lasts it for a few seconds, <laughs> really. Well, it, uh, it doesn't warm it by... It stays cold, but it doesn't warm it by much. Uh, so it's just slightly less cold. Anything yeah. is better than this cold. <laughs> I, I, I mean, for me, every time I have that experience in wintertime, it's the cruelest thing ever because you feel great for a second, and then it feels worse afterwards. And it goes away. <laughs> as it goes away. But yeah, you, you find a, a moment to kind of pray over each of them and allow them to get warmed slightly. Um, you feel surprised in some ways that the 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 orcs uh, that we, they were out there fighting weren't wearing more, but but they're working. Battle so, yeah. does tend to generate a lot more heat. Yeah. <clears throat> well, shall we? How do we introduce ourselves? I suggest he do all the introductions. Uh, sure. And we may wish to follow him. Um, I will actually also. I'm going to pull a torch out of my bag and light it and just hold it. <laughs> Why are you on fire? It's so much warmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kind of like move closer to Elzera because she has fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just close enough to not be awkward. Get your own. We'll approach. The, okay. I assume we're kind of heading through the clearing. 
Um, we'll try to find a, a relatively well-worn path that looks like it heads towards the settlement. Okay. As you move towards the clearing, you can see that there are places where probably hunters or some others have traveled out where there's a little more worn pathways in through the snow, uh, and you start trudging towards the village. Um, there are uh, a few shouts, presumably from uh, guards, maybe, or, or spotters, something like that, um, as you kind of become visible on the edge of the, uh, of the town. Um, the... Uh, the military don't seem to respond, but you do see someone uh, approaching you from the village itself. Someone is dressed in, in heavy uh, 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 furs, uh, carrying and brandishing uh, a, uh, a bow and arrow, uh, one of those long, long arrows that they use for hunting. Uh, looks to be a, a male orc, um, older, you think, a little bit gray in, in the beard, um, wispy hair kind of tied into a small top knot. Um, you can see a scar along the face uh, from from battle. One of my first thoughts seeing that size of arrow is, would that be categorized under arrow or javelin? In my, <laughs> it, it's, it's my right in that that sweet spot, if you will, between the two of them. Um, <laughs> my first thought is like in my quiver that I have to organize everything by size. <laughs> Fair enough. Where would this go? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but they, they are shouting at you in Orcish. Yeah, okay. uh, halt. Yeah, Who are you, strangers? I'll, I'll stop everybody. Um, we'll yell back. And We're travelers. We mean no harm. We're looking for warmth. Um, We've come to help. Uh, asking where you've come from. Um, Name yourselves. We've come from Tikatek. My name is Clark. You know, spell out shark killer in, in Orc. Okay. Uh, and the arrow kind of gets leveled at the others. And you hear the same shouted, shouted uh, question. Introduce yourselves. I'll mm. translate as best I can. Yep. Elzera. Druid. Zach is the frozen. <laughs> I translate that literally. Well, well, as best I can. Okay. There's a little <laughs> chuckle that comes from this. Amber's <laughs> a servant of Alexia. Okay. Um, I'm just here, like, hugging. Hugging my father. <laughs> at this point, uh, the shouting from this orc is starting to attract a bit of attention, mm -hmm. and the fighting is halted over on the other side where the military are. Uh, and you can see about uh, there's a, a shout as one of the the generals basically orders four or five of them to go and investigate, mm -hmm. uh, and several uh, large uh, orcs start charging over uh, three three women and two men basically. Uh, with the large clubs that they've been practicing with uh, uh, and start to walk on either side of the uh, the one who's confronted you. Did we say the right thing? We said the right thing, right? Yeah, we're getting a welcome. Just chill out. Okay. <laughs> um, and they uh, they surround you, basically, mm -hmm. on, on both sides. Um, and it looks like they're still waiting for a better answer or reason. Okay. Um, the one who has been asking questions... Um, asks, what brings you from Tigatek? You are not with a caravan. We are travelers from the islands to the south. Tigatek is where we landed. We've heard you've had problems. We're here to help. And what business do you have here? Seems very suspicious still. There is a sickness in the land. We are here to uh, remedy it as best we can. If this is Aza. And you hear one of them, uh, one of the, the large uh, women, bald shaven, uh, with one of the clubs just sort of uh, smacking your club against your hand. I say we test them. And there's a general murmur of agreement from the other soldiers that are there, but the one with the bow seems to be less convinced and more questioning. Okay. Who do you represent? Us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who do we want to represent today, guys? I don't know. We're working for you today. <laughs> What'd you say, boss? Marius, Paluxia, Paturo, and ourselves. There's an odd look that crosses this, this orc's face and sort of um, switches to common in his response. Those are not people. Who sent you? Those are, the, those are the people that sent us. <laughs> and the, the orcs around are looking a little more suspicious. 
uh, moving in a little bit closer, the one who called for the testing before. Uh, see, I still say that we test them. It can, is the only way that we can know for sure. What is, do, do I understand what she says? Or? No. Okay. Only in uh, the If you poke me, I'll say, that one's, okay. looking, look, that one's looking to physically test us. Test us. Yeah. What does this mean? Physically test us. When he was like, mentioning the names of the gods, I'll basically sort of crack the jacket open slightly to show the symbol of Alexio. Okay. Um, well, but uh, when, when we had this uh, issue with a doppelganger at the library, the test was just like, poke, get a drop of blood, and make sure we're who we say we are. Yes. Are, big people this year? These, are big people who like thumping things. This is an army. They like to see how strong you are physically. <sighs> I would suggest not physically. blasting them. Well, I'll, I'll, Certainly vol- not I'll volunteer if it comes up. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, still in work addressing the first questioner with the bow. Uh, he will say, uh, my friends and I um, have been fated to come here and help. Uh, we just want to do that and then leave. How can you help? Will you fight in the war? Is that why you are here? Uh, Clark will draw the the, um, the thin blade. There's a, a immediate response from the orcs that are around you who are Stepping forward. And I'll flip it over and present the handle. Um, the, the one who, uh, who was calling for the test uh, walks straight up to you um, and seems to be testing and grabs the blade away from you. Okay. Uh, none too carefully either, almost like she's trying to catch you on the way out. Uh, do you try to get out of the way? No, or? he'll okay. take a wound if he has to. Okay. Um, the, uh, the blade does kind of slice along your hand. Uh, and you are bleeding mm-hmm. from that hand, so one hit point damage. Yes, not really significant damage, but um, she looks at at the blade, and then looks at the blood on the blade. Takes to, drops her her uh, club, runs her finger along the blade, and then tastes it. Looks at you kind of confusedly. Shrugs. <sighs> so tested and just throws the blade back at you. Grabs the club and turns, and the other four or five of them move away. The one with the, the uh, bow and arrow relaxes. Clark will wipe. What's that, the test? And then put the sword down. Test it uh, for the, the what one with the bow and arrow about? kind of I'm not just sure. drops the, arrow, the bow back on, puts the arrow back in, mm-hmm. and walks but, forward. I was, ex- that one, I was expecting a beating, so yeah. I don't that, know. That, that one's both common, so I'll, I'll flat out ask him what, what was that about. There have been those who've come to us and said they were to help, but they were not as they seemed. Hmm? Double mm. ears. I what? don't know the word, but if that's what you call them, that's what they were. Those who look like those they are not. Yes. We've dealt with those before. Mm-hmm. Have you? Yeah. A few times. They have strange blood. Perhaps you can be of help. I do not know the rest of you, but you have been tested. If the rest are at fault, you will be killed. It's fine. He, he holds forward his hand for a, uh, a handshake. Sure. I am a Gano. How do you spell it? Yeah. G-A-N-U. I am the Master Hunter. I'm Clark, Zakis, Amron, Elzera. Hi, Clark, Zakis, Amron, Elzera. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. Clark, <laughs> point. <laughs> well met. Come with me. Sure. You look like you're frozen. Yes. I'm just here. And, and astute he's observation. Like bare, bare arms, bare legs. He's got some, you know, he's got some furs over his feet. He's got something on his shoulders, but for the most part, he's like he's wearing a summer vest compared to most of the rest of you. Yeah, he's gonna find me now. Yeah, well, he, my feet will look cold. He would look actually. Uh, take a double uh, look at your coat. Uh, well made. Yes. Very well made. And he leads you into the town. The. Uh, the soldiers who came out to, to meet you have now rejoined, although you do see that one who came forward for the test uh, kind of eyeing you suspiciously. There's almost the, you know, I got my eyes on you kind of kind of effect from her. Should the rest of us be tested as well? You will be, yeah. if it's needed. For now, you have one among you who can speak. Oh, there we go. Great. Not all will be so free with their friendship. But I, I trust these others implicitly. I hope you trust them with your life. I have to. 
You will. You said the other, uh, the lady with the club was looking at us. Yes. I draw my dagger, look at her, and go, slash. And I offer the dagger in my hand. Okay. She's still uh, some distance away, but she sees you do that. And there's a look of disappointment that crosses her face. Almost as though, damn, there's one less excuse that she has. Just, um, just stab you. <laughs> oh, that's right. She can't see that from here. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I, I just offer, like, would you wish to? Uh, she just, uh, again, with a disappointed look, just sort of shrugs and turns away back to the to the uh, the fighting that's going on. Slugs the guy next to her for no apparent reason. <laughs> uh, he goes down on one knee. I tie up my hand. Mm. Can't use his hand anymore. <laughs> um, uh, he leads you in toward the, towards the town, and there are a lot of questioning faces that come from both sides. Um, a lot of a lot of frightened faces, actually. Um, there are a lot of people putting on a, on, on uh, brave fronts, but you can also see a lot of furtive glances and, and nervous glances, not coming from Agena himself, uh, but coming from the other uh, village uh, people that are there. Uh, you know, the cop, the fireman. The <laughs> uh, I also have no apparent weapons on me. I have an empty quiver. Okay. So... And a torch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Igeno seems to have paid most attention to the one that could speak orc, first of all. Yeah. Um, but then a little bit of attention to the one who's wearing an orc jacket. Um, the other two of you, there's a sort of appraisal of they're too small to be dangerous in some ways. It's, <laughs> uh, you don't get a sense of, of, of fear from them. Um, but caution. Not the smartest idea, but... Mm. You get the impression that the the orcs have a very physically oriented culture. Fair enough. Really? <laughs> um, as you're passing by, and he kind of leads you towards uh, deeper and deeper into the the town, these squat stone buildings that actually look pretty uh, solid and ancient. Mm -hmm. um, they look as though they've been uh, carved out of large blocks of, of stone. Um, you see ornate carving along the front of all these buildings that's been carved over time. In fact, you see some people there who are heaving a stone into place, probably replacing an, an older stone because it looks much younger than the ones around it, and someone else is already ready with a, a hammer and chisel to start carving into it. Uh, some of it is orcish, but more pictogram, more stylized, uh, not exactly uh, sentences so much as symbols, so much as uh, wards almost, you might say. Uh, lead you towards the uh, mountainside. And the village extends off in both directions, not really with any road so much, just as there are blank spaces between the buildings. But the buildings are um, uh, fairly solid. But as you come to the mountainside, the thing that strikes uh, certainly the three of you the most is that the similarity between this and the large doors of Dren in the mountainside is actually quite remarkable. They are large, square uh, stone doors that are partially ajar at the moment with uh, goods and supplies going in and out. In fact, he leads you deeper into through those doors. Uh, there are guards there um, that uh, look at you suspiciously, but at a look from Migeno, uh seem to uh, acknowledge him as the leader, uh, but he does present his hand to them at when, he come, when he comes in, and they cut across his hand. And when they see him bleed proper, they let him through and let you with him. Um, question. Mm -hmm. Compared to the altitudes of the mountain in Farhaven, mm -hmm. is this comparable or higher? Um, this is probably on the same height as Farhaven, but the mountain itself is a lot higher than Drew. Yeah. So. Yeah, like, like where we are. Yeah. Uh, so, because... If need be, I do have a form that is meant for this altitude, <laughs> uh, so should be fine. It's just I want to possibly look for some animals that are acclimated okay. to this. Um, they do have some uh, some squat uh, uh, po uh, uh, pony slash donkey like mm -hmm. uh, uh, creatures which are being used to haul some of the things. Uh, there are bears that are actually being used to haul things. Uh, they've got harnesses on them, uh, and they don't seem to be 
they don't seem to be terribly ferocious, but it also seems like there's a bit of a, of a relationship between them and the masters that are leading them. Mm -hmm. um, because they will snarl everybody else, but at, a, at a, even just a, a small word from the, the master, they seem to draw back in line. There's only a couple of those. Mm -hmm. And you almost get the impression that the harness is not meant for what is being done, used for now. It's not meant to be attaching a wagon to, or rather more a sled, really, to. But they're using it that way. Okay. Um, and yeah, that at the moment that's all you really see. Okay. Uh, although you did see a squirrel and it was adapted to this height, so there's a yeah. lot. So b basically, looking for something I can turn into to stay warm. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, actually large wolves that accompany some of the orcs inside as well. The wolves, uh, when they sit um, standing up, mm -hmm. uh, are actually as tall as you are. They look smaller, but that's when they're they're on all fours. But when they actually stand back up, they're about four or five feet tall. Uh, some of them have them kind of following along. They look like pets, more or less. As you get close to the main doors, uh, as described originally as sort of dwarven in nature, you can see that the entire surface of the door has been recarved. Or if it was dwarven, it's been recarved. Otherwise, it looks much like the buildings carved in the sort of stylish uh, orcish uh, uh, script. Mm. Once you pass through the first uh, set of doors, mm -hmm. Um, it is a much lower entrance. The doors themselves are probably 20 feet tall, but the, and the main hallway is 20 feet. But smaller rooms go off to either side. And immediately, as soon as you enter, the temperature warms up considerably. Yes. Um, there is a, a, a strange smell in the air, almost like uh, a, a match being lit, a sort of acrid, sulfurous smell. It's very mild. It's also extraordinarily dim inside, but there are numerous torches. And then you have one of your <laughs> Did we see lava in the shadow? Lava? In that first big cave with the big doors, and you had the, the big... Early on, when we first got to the city with what's-his-face. Uh, I don't think you saw <coughs> lava. Okay. Or lava. Or lava. Well, I think... Tomato, tomato. I think mm -hmm. there... Was at the very start. Which direction you saw that? Because oh, I don't mean outside. I mean we were in the caves underground at the very first, and we f end up fighting the small black dragon. I think oh, there yeah. was a little bit of lava. I believe there was somewhere. Okay. There, yes. So, yeah. so but, it's, but I it's think not, that's all. It's not out of the ordinary to imagine there's heat underground, and they've they've used it somehow here. Oh, certainly not okay. out of the ordinary. Okay. Um, you would have. There are islands which do have some active volcanoes on them. Even geothermals. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Um, once inside, there are people in all directions kind of delivering and storing in goods. You do see military groups of six or eight uh, soldiers kind of moving along, every once in a while stopping and asking people. Um, the general impression you get is that there's a lot of work being done. There is a little bit of nervousness, though, and you may have some indication as to why. Um, after another couple of minutes, uh, Iganu leads you off into one side chamber, which is fairly large, sparse stone furniture, a little bit of wood here in the wood table. Um, we will await the leader. Sure. Um, and leaves you alone. Closes the door behind him. It's a heavy stone door. Okay, everybody. We're going to need a leader, I guess. So hang tight. Right. Cool. Well, Try not to make any sudden moves. I'm going to sit down and meditate in the corner after taking the jacket off. <laughs> yeah, inside it's already starting to get almost uncomfortably warm, mm -hmm. and the amount these led you in uh, has, uh, has kind of been to that level of almost normal temperature, even a little bit more humid than you're expecting. Yeah, I'll put the coat back in the bag. You're left alone for about 15 minutes or so. Okay. And at that point, the doors open wide. Two of the, the soldier types uh, are standing on either side, and in walks an older female orc, um, bent over, still standing about seven feet tall, enormous shoulders, long uh, curved arms that, that look like they've, they've been... Uh, drawn in almost as though the whole body is starting to shrink in on itself but still with rather strong long fingers uh, who comes walking into the room limping a little bit 
uh, and looking back and forth at all of you, uh, and speaks with a, a harsh voice, but in, in a slightly accented, but otherwise perfect common, probably told by Igenu that you speak that. Igenu uh, also enters the room with them. Why do you come here now? What brings you here? There's a very suspicious tone. Fate. We're here to do a task. <laughs> fate. I like fate. What task are you here to, to do? We're here to find the heart of the god Paturo and return it to him. And in doing so, heal the land. Hmm. And its people. Gainu kind of looks a little bit confused at that. While well, you had said the name before, and then this whole notion of what this actually was, uh, there's a sort of growing realization that maybe it wasn't fairy tales and random words you were saying before. Well, we don't think that the heart is here. We had indication that something was going on here, that our services were needed. The heart is not here. This I know. You may leave us, and she, she gestures at the two soldiers who close the door, and you, uh, to Agano as well, who looks like they're going to protest, but one look from the leader, um, and they back down. Uh, it's given that this is like a nine foot solid practiced warrior, uh, it's a little bit weird that they would back down so quickly. Even though this is the leader, they're not necessarily physically threatening, although they are large and intimidating. Um, it's, it's a, do I want to fight with mom? No, they don't want to fight with mom. Uh, and they leave and close the doors. Um, the leader who is now, or was introduced to you as uh, Expa, E-X-P-A, moves over slowly and sits down on the stone bench near you. And then sort of crackle, snap, straightens up a little bit. And the aspect changes. And their skin goes gray. And their arms straighten. And their fingers snap and grow longer and pointed. And the face drains of the green skin that was there before. And the expression goes from one of amusement and concern to amusement and delight as you recognize someone standing before you. Is that it's the, been a long time. Is that the same doppelganger so that was at the library? Nope. Okay. No, she's the hag. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> it is so good to see you again, Zakis. And that voice and the face you now remember. One of three hags that you met in this small pocket place where uh, bone twitch and better challenge. This was the one whose name you didn't catch. Okay. This is the one, however, which promised you power if you came back to her and promised to teach you things. It's so nice to be myself. So it wasn't Matron Horror for us? Nope. No, it's okay. the other one. Um, 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 I don't um, think um, you ever caught her name. No. no. She's the one who said that she was involved in Riarden's soul. Imprisoned his soul. Okay. Well, it's nice to see you again, I suppose. Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry about, about your books. Oh, they weren't my books. That was Bone Twitch's collection. Well, I'm still ter ter terribly sorry. I learned what I needed from them, even if she didn't. Oh, what's contained in them? Oh, would you like to know? If you can spare some time, I could teach you. At a cost, she kind of I'm leans sure. forward a little bit and reaches out towards you. Do you move away? A little bit. It's like mm. I'll stop her hand. You're gonna stop her hand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she looks at you disappointed and kind of reaches out, almost as though she just wanted to caress his cheek. We barely know each other. That enchantment is so strong. Even I find it difficult to resist. But I will. Fate, you say? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Fate has been a speciality of my kind forever. 
So tell me, what are you here to do? And how do you expect to disrupt my plans? Because I presume that's part of it. Are you making the kids sick? No. Are you befouling the land? I suppose it depends on what you call befouling. Some have considered my presence alone to be difficult to adjust to. But I've made a home out of these people. I look around the home just for a second, expecting to see bones. <laughs> oh, no. Stones, not bones. Mm. So what are your plans exactly? I don't feel I need to explain myself to you. But it would be nice. It is as I don't as even I know if you would understand, to be honest. We're here to get the heart. Oh, that part seemed pretty clear. I'm surprised you know about it. Not many people do. We were tasked to retrieve it mm -hmm. from the man himself. Paturo. Yeah. Ah, oh, what a delightful pain in the ass he can be. Literally, I think it's his whole job, really. Or was. He's been ill disposed for so long. Heart sick, I suppose. But then it's. So you are here about the heart? It's not here. If it were, I would have it by now. And trust me, I wouldn't mind having my hands on it. The same agents who removed it uh, seem to have had some sort of influence here. Mm. I've heard things. People go missing. It's annoying because I didn't do it. Is there an affliction affecting the children? There have been some who've been sick. I've seen a few. I've been wanting to see what happens, but they always vanish before I have a chance. They take them out to see. I did read about a disease at the library one time, uh, and I'll explain to her like what I, what Zachus reasoned like back in Gigatech. It's pretty much like they turn into statues almost. Oh, that was fun. Oh, it sounded terrifying, but... Probably yeah. quite terrifying. Reading this about is, it was fun. This is different. I suspect the heart is involved. I'm not sure how. Unfortunately, one of the benefits and drawbacks of my current position is I... I don't quite have as much freedom to roam whenever I wish. Too many decisions to make. Too many people looking to me to lead them in this time of terror and peril. But, it's a burden I'm willing to put up with. So what is the disease? Why, why, why are the people here so nervous? Well, there have been missing people, as I said. Ones who've been sick and ones who haven't. I didn't know if it was all connected or not. But all the ones who get sick disappeared? Yes. I guess we know what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. If there's anything you can do to aid us, whether it's your information or influence, we'd like it. And we'll try to do this job as quickly as we can. You're asking for my help? I will right, make no <laughs> more deals with hags. No, wait, you've made one? We've made ones before, yes. Yes, I suppose. Aha. Uh -huh. When? Didn't catch me there. Suppose <laughs> 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 player. <laughs> <laughs> player save. We'll save. <laughs> save with advantage. Awesome. <laughs> I can assist you, or I can make it very hard for you to do this, and just find a solution on my own. And once I have the heart, I'm sure all will be well. And why do you want the heart? Why does anyone want power? to use it. You, of all people, would know that. I've sensed that in you from the very first moment I met you, all those many years ago. Mm hmm And how does it... How does one tap into the heart's power? It has the power of judgment. It has the power of transformation. It has the power to remake people. That alone would be enough. I know a few other ways to transform it, to make it a part of me, maybe. 
I'm not sure. I look forward to experimenting with it. Good to know. I could use an apprentice. Someone with considerable skill and power. Someone who would benefit from the knowledge. I'll think about it. Do so. Your fate is not yet set. Influenced, but not set. Hmm. Ah, forgive me. That was a great enchantment. And she what was it? pulls back a little bit. Each of you can make an insight check. Mm -hmm. I'll just look that. Hmm. 27. Okay. Are we still exhausted even though it's... You are still exhausted. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm to arrest you. 15. Dang it. Okay, 13. 12. Uh, 22. 22. So, the three of you kind of noticed her step back a little bit, but it almost as though she's done with that part of the conversation. To you, Elzara, and, and also reflecting on the previous time she'd mentioned enchantment, it was almost as though for a moment there, she couldn't help herself. As though she had been drawn to Zacchaeus uh -huh. like a moth to the flame. But she overcame it, and she knows about it, and teasingly likes to mention it. If you would rid this issue from my people, I might be able to help you in your search for the heart. We're here to solve the problem you have immediately. Anything and it's not for you. Anything beyond that, I can't guarantee. Good. I wouldn't want you to be too easy. So. She kind of bends forward a little bit and once again takes on the form of Expa. What can I do for you? Where would you like to start? Can you point us to one of the sick, if there are any present? I can make sure that you are taken to them, yes. And how contagious is this? It does not seem to be terribly contagious. If it were, the entire village would be yeah. encumbered with it. Is it only the children here as well? It started with them. Diseases seem to take the kids so faster than others. Shame and a tragedy. And she puts on a mask of, of utter sorrow for a moment. But you all kind of get the sense. And in some ways, she's delighting in the idea of you knowing that it's a mask. I'm just roll my eyes. <laughs> uh, but others have been missing. I did not know if they were sick or not. They just simply vanished. And how long ago did the trouble start? A few weeks. I think of the first ones that came in coughing and sneezing and generally moaning. Those ones were put to sea quickly. But I managed to encourage the others to let it travel a little longer until they vanished on me. Hmm. And I just note to the DM, is that the same illness that was in uh, Jigadak? It, it sounds... From similar. the vague description? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a general sort of first, from what you've seen of symptoms, uh, sort of lethargy and a bit of coughing, a bit of breathing problem, and then um, as she describes the symptoms, they do seem to match. The, the notion that they have difficulty kind of heavily breathing, and then they have difficulty moving all that much. They grow slower and less responsive. Um, but uh, she says she's never seen what symptoms come after that, because at that point, they have all vanished. Right. It's most annoying. Mm -hmm. Even had someone watched them, but did not seem to matter. So they just teleported, didn't just walk away? No, I do not sense that kind of magic here. It's more difficult in this place. It's well guarded against many things. Guarded how? Oh, there are many, many magics woven into every wall of this place. Some of them older than the orcs themselves. Some even maybe older than me, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to examine them all. I did notice some similarities to uh, the Dwarven architecture in Dren. Was this formerly a, a Dwarven encampment? There were Dwarves here long ago. They were slaughtered and removed, so far as I know the history. I'll have to read up on that, see if we have anything in the library. Anyway, uh, if you could take us to the sick, that would be useful. 
Would you guys have any other suggestions? It's a place to start. I will have a Ganu with you. Good. This traveling in, it's beneath somewhat of my stature now. I used to know the feeling. Uh, you can well, know it again. You deserve so much more. Possibly eventually, just one thing at a time. One thing could lead to the other. More power now could lead to better solutions for everything. It wouldn't take much at all. As I said, I will think about it. Um, there was one of the orcs that mentioned people came in to try to help before, and some kind of a shapeshifter problem. Is there a doppelganger in these walls? At least one. Aside from you. <laughs> I am not one of those mere gray changers. I'm much more than that. I am the leader here. Yes. It's but a transformation there, of others. But there is one of them as at least one of them in addition to you that does not work for you? Oh, none of them work for me. I tried approaching them before, but they're terribly independent. I'm not sure what they're doing here, or if they're connected to this, but they're here. They think they're being clever, and for the most part, they're reasonably clever. They aren't causing me any problems, so I don't really care that much. Are the hobgoblins close to here? I noticed there's an army that seems like it's preparing for. The hobgoblins are currently encamping in Striantec. Players, look at the map. <laughs> Where is it? I'm probably looking right at it. So, probably somewhere north. You guys don't actually have this map, oh, but just okay. for general reference, this is the central part. Mm -hmm. So the Orc Islands are over here. Strandek is the island closest to the hub, uh, the Hobgoblin uh, Islands. So you guys are kind of over okay. here. Okay. So it's further east a ways. Gotcha. Yeah. But again, you do remember that was where Paul said he was from. Okay. The war will be fought closer to home soon. It will be quite amazing. Who's helping the Hobgoblins? They seem to have outside help. Those who took the heart, I suspect. Hobgoblins are terribly um, organized. And I find that one does not have to control each individual. One, one has to only control their leaders. Or so they say. I never dabbled in that as much as Horfrost did. Mm -hmm. So what, what's she up to nowadays? I don't know. Keeping quiet for some reason. Hmm. <laughs> Decidedly does not look at anybody right now. <laughs> Do we notice? No. Aura of guilt. <laughs> Aura of guilt. No. He's just staring at a wall. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll see from, see her again soon. Mm -hmm. She has to protect her assets after all. Of which I am not. So precious. Anyway, yes, if we could meet some of the sick. As you wish. And she raises her voice, Iganu! And the doors open. And Iganu steps forward. Yes, leader. They wish to see some of the afflicted. Take them to see the poor unfortunates. They, I believe, can help us with this terrible problem. We were able to help in Tegatek. Or at least Amrun was. You see, there is hope after all, Iganu. We will not suffer this for much longer. You gotta kind of nods. As you wish, my leader, uh, come with me. And I'll follow him and I'll nod and say thanks to um, Expa. Expa. <laughs> Go and may the fortunes and fates be with you. Thank you. You gotta kind of walk stiffly in front of you. Follow. Yeah. So follow. you, you can do something about this. You really can. We will try. I believe so, yes. Only you would come sooner. Any? How many have disappeared? No one has taken account. But my son is gone. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. If only you were sooner. 
moving further and deeper in, this time off to the left-hand side, sorry, left-hand side, uh, leads you through an alleyway to another building <coughs> beyond the main, the main pathway. This building looks a lot more run down. It looks like it hasn't been maintained like the ones were at the front. Um, there are uh, crumbling facades. You actually can still make out a few dwarven symbols in some of the crumbled facade as mm -hmm. well, uh, almost as though they haven't even been attended to. It leads you in, and uh, the chamber is um, holds about six kids, all in various stages, similar symptoms of what you've seen before. There are a couple of uh, shaman there, uh, similar to Pollux, who seem to be conducting some rituals, but unlike what Pollux had of some sort of success, it seems like they are more frantic, almost as though something is not going right. Uh, there's also a drummer in the corner trying to keep beat and helping them with the, the uh, ceremony they're holding. Egano speaks quickly to someone who seems to be in charge. Um, they look back and forth to all of you. You can tell that basically it's an introduction and that they're here to help. And the leader has sent them, so there's almost no question at that point. The name seems to hold weight, and again, it seems to be as Master Hunter, um, also respected. And he simply gestures. These are one room of them. There have been more. How many rooms are there? Ten. <laughs> Eleven this morning. Um, are these the worst cases? He asks one of the attendants. They shake their head. The response translated back again, either through Clark or through mm -hmm. Egano, is these are typical cases. There are some that are worse. There are some that are better. There's one, and they point to a, a child in the corner who seems to be just sitting there solidly among the worst. I can help the worst cases for now if if you can if we can gather them together in an area I may be able to help more of them but it will take a while so I should deal with the, the worst for the wor I should deal with those closest to death first again it translates and the, the shaman looks suspect uh, suspicious um, the guy who yells I say just do it I say, <laughs> il pollux unga uh, and both of them turn to you with some surprise. At least I try to say it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the shaman turns to you and starts to speak rapidly, which you don't understand at all. No, I, That's all he knows. <laughs> Clark will try to interpret. He just asked yeah. where the toilet was, and they're asking you, they're giving you the life story. No, um, <laughs> well, the, actually, the history of the town is toilets were, no. Um, no, it, it seems to be a kind of um, uh, a almost a, an outpouring of emotion. It's like you, you truly do represent what we've been looking for. You, true, you know, the spirits have been have been calling for a healer, and maybe you are among us. Um, and starts to describe the symptoms. And uh, again, uh, in a, 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 a guy who is trying to translate. But at the same time, he doesn't really understand the technical, if you will, the technical language of it, and it's somewhat similar to you as well. Um, but um, uh, you're kind of getting the sit rep, if you will, mm. from from this person, yeah. who now is kind of overflowing. Uh, the drummer has stopped drumming at this point because the, yeah. the ceremony is ruined, essentially, mm -hmm. or disrupted. Zachis, your language is spell. Can you cast it on others? I believe so. And by that, I mean, I will, I'm pretty sure, but I'll make sure I know. <laughs> um. The drummer coughs quite violently. And the two shaman look over, somewhat alarmed. I'm going to... No, it doesn't work on anybody else. Okay, I thought so. Uh, I'm going to approach one of the, the people who are sick, and I'm going to do my own medicine check. Okay. Because I've also helped heal. Mm -hmm. So while they're talking. Yep. For fuck's sakes, can I roll above a five, please? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that is still an 11, but below a five. <laughs> so you're checking kind of temperature and. and yeah, I'm checking to see if 
I recognize anything from my experience. Okay. You kind of uh, touch the forehead. It is, it is cool and clammy, very similar to the ones that were there before. Um, you kind of check in the heartbeat. You kind of put your finger probably to the neck to try to get a heartbeat. It's it's slow and, and laborious is one way to put it. Not just weak, but kind of like it's trying super hard and doing very, very slow. Uh, and then you're kind of looking down to try to get an assessment and the eyes have locked onto you. They're solid black and the hand grips onto your arm suddenly. We're gonna go to break. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> so we're gonna take a short break here and uh, I will set up what is likely to happen in the next little while and we will return with that relatively shortly. Suspense is over. We have returned. <laughs> so we've returned to the uh, the other view. We're viewing a map. I've, I've laid it out. Maybe nothing will happen. Maybe it's all just a misunderstanding, really. Um, just to, uh, because I don't happen to have six kid minis, as I realized dumbly enough, I've decided to use at least six minis to roll the same style, which are the hmm. the only ones I've really properly painted on masks are these knolls that I've had I for a long time. People. If you can find some, I can fix I, that for you later. I, and I... I, I that requires a lot more planning ahead. Yeah. The small people won't be a problem for very long, though. Oh, yeah. Um, Little kids. The, uh, the other ones to note in the room, uh, we have Elzera there now. Mm -hmm. And I and have... Zakis uh, and Clark. Yeah, Zakis. Okay, so you're all in there. Uh, I'm not, because I didn't know where I was. Okay, you probably are just inside the, the, the door. Yeah, you're, you're talking um, to the shaman. And... Yeah, actually, okay. you were kind of talking to the shaman. So the shaman is the one right behind Elzera. Okay. Uh, is the one standing there. Kind uh, of there between. were two shamans. Right yep. There. The other one is in the center of the room. That one and that one? The, the other one hadn't okay. been saying much. He was, seemed to be more of an attendant, but that was yeah. the one you were talking to. The, the drummer? The drummer is the one by the door. This or the the paper one? or The uh, the paper oh. one, if he's got the bow on, that's yeah. actually a nagu. Okay. 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 So, uh, and the actual mini is the drummer. And then there's the other, there were three attendants, the other one is by... That one over there. So one, two, three attendants, drummer, Anagu, us. That's yep. right. Okay. So, we can handle six kids. Yeah. In the instant that that um, child turns to you and grabs your, heart, your arm, um, there's a sort of low hiss that comes out of their mouth in that second. But actually, yeah, at that point, it's pretty much going to be the moment of reveal. As the strength grows considerably to the point where you find your, your hand actually, or your arm actually bound by this hand, which is growing. Uh, the skin is darkening and turning blue and becoming uh, thick and solid. This is happening in, in an instant afterwards to each of the other children as their, their bodies seem to suck in on themselves, losing mass in their center form to grow in size for their arms and legs. Their arms grow uh, nasty looking, uh, 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 not fangs, claws, uh, claws thank you. Uh, their faces start to, to grow squatter and wider and their mouths elongate into massive toothy, uh, well I'll call them grins for the moment. Um, the drummer doubles over his drum and begins to similarly change, but his skin turns gray. If you want to actually replace the drummer with that. Was it this guy? Yep. Yeah. As before you, you see each of them kind of straighten up and become monsters. Spines pop out of their out of their backs. Uh, their their muscles seem taut and ferocious, their skin blue and rough. Their eyes and faces utterly alien, wild, uh, wide, uh, wild eyes that are larger, expanding out of their skulls. All of this happens in an instant. There's two ways I could describe this, as a transformation or as a release. And it's hard in that instant to figure out which is which. However, they do not gain surprise in this instance, so we will roll initiative. And you can choose to act or not act on your turn. Seriously? To go last. So we'll I am just shocked. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think I still go before you then. Yeah. Three. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> oh, yeah, plus one from yeah. your deck, so mm -hmm. two, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have plus two. <laughs> this dice might go into dice trash. I've been rolling. All right. I have five, one, two, three, four, six, seven more d20s. Uh, before they all get banished. <laughs> okay. Uh, time out. Uh, just to note, numbers will be, let's say, potential opposition. Letters are potential uh, allies. Okay. Uh, so, 20 to 25. 21. 21. Somebody got, got a nice roll. So, I've got... We have her. two ones. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> Uh, 15 to 20. 18. 18. 10 to 15. D -d -d just skip to single digits. Yeah. <laughs> skip down add, to one. I've got to add them. In there. Okay. Uh, yep. So, that's your, the nurses, essentially. Uh, and, Genu. Space. There's three shamans. So I am doing group initiative for some of them here. Good. <laughs> Just to make it easier and more coherent for myself. And between the two of you, what did you get? Three and two. Yeah. Three. We, we three both rolled two. ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so bringing up the caboose. I'm just in shock. Almost around the corner. <laughs> I'm just like taking notes mentally about these characters. Like, have I read about them in the library? Oh shit, they're right in front of me. <laughs> so, uh, the first to move. Uh, let's see. Is the drummer actually? Now, the children all have transformed into these smaller, blue-skinned creatures. The drummer, on the other hand, uh, seems to be larger and gray-skinned. Uh, if you will, proportionate to the forms they were before. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. And he turns to Genu, who's next to him, and begins to slash at him and makes one, one uh, a nasty bite towards him. His jaw unhinges in an unnatural uh, safe shape. For comparison, the orc who was there before, the drummer, this would be like unhinging all the way back to the back of his head. Um, but it's just sort of this unnatural bite. It's very Canadian. Uh, <laughs> so, odd <laughs> phraseology, but sure. Let's a bunch of these dice. I don't generally. Yep. I'm usually on this side of the screen for this run, so. Isn't that cheating? <laughs> or is it just for like a picture reference? Hmm? For like a picture reference? No, I want to. I'm thinking of doing something with a spell. Oh. Wow, okay. Uh, after taking a nasty chunk out of a gainer's side, the gainer seems to recover a little bit and sidestep the, the claws. Oh. The, uh, the gray figure backs up into the doorway, however, blocking it. So, like, right here? Yeah. What are we looking for, Zacchaeus? Hmm? What are we looking for, Nax? Oh, he's looking for something, not me. For the monster manual? Yeah. Yeah, Pat was looking for something, not me. Uh, oh, okay. Clark. Yeah. Uh, the tenor of the room has changed significantly. Looks like it has. The uh, three attendees are as shocked as anyone. They don't seem to have figured out what's going on. Okay. But you can clearly see that these creatures have transformed. What they were once may have been orc children, or maybe they never were. Uh, Clark would like to draw Lucille and approach so as to lop the hand off of Elzera, for at least the rest of them from it, leaving the hand perhaps. 
You know, that threw me for a second yeah. there. I was yeah. like, wait, I don't remember us having a secret plan where you turned against them. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> suddenly removed my hand. That only happened once. <laughs> Everyone can grow it back. It's fine. I mean, that's a strategy. You can go for that if you like. But uh, I've got to pass by somebody and probably take an attack. Uh, indeed. I don't actually no, leave. No, he he has still the I don't actually so. leave, so I guess I can get that. Oh, that's far. right, because you got range with. The, I was already in the in their zone anyway. Yep. So. First strike. That's cocked. I'm sorry. Fail at rolling dice. That's a fail. Second strike. <laughs> yeah, might, that might work. Uh, 19 to hit? 19 does hit. Yeah, so you're going to... You find the skin has toughened up, and when you slice your blade through, it, it does cut, but it took more effort than you thought it would, certainly if it was just normal skin. I was going to say, not like the usual children I hack down a piece? Well... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of gross. Um, all right. <clears throat> uh, Lucille today does this. Right. I'll call those in a Six, seven, eight, nine silver damage if it matters. All right, it bites deeply into its hand. It pulls back the hand, letting go of all those Okay, well, that's that's a good effect as well. That's the end of my turn. Okay, I'm ruined. Um, okay, I should first thing he would try to you do is actually um, trying to try for divine intervention. <laughs> Paluxia, please save these children. Okay. Uh, we're children. <laughs> there were children. To a god, they're all children. Oh. Yeah, 56. Protects. No. It, it protects all of them against you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, now, is the drummer looking like the same sort of thing as no, the rest of No, he looks them? larger They're and grayish. A different different color. thing. Okay, but he looks like a the same, same thing, same just species, a different color, just different okay. size and color. Slightly more um, angular features, actually. And uh, if you got close enough, you'd see there are larger spines in its back pointing outward. Okay, I. Uh I think that'll be it for me. I don't think I've got a bonus action I can really use for much right now, so... Mm, you... you spiritual weapon? I don't want to kill any of them. Fair enough. Uh, I was considering using it against him, but if he just changes something that kind of... To Amran, that would suggest he just transformed and he's still him, but changed, rather than he's one of the... the monstery things we should kill. Uh, so, yeah. Nope. Amron, uh, yeah, and you can't hold a bonus action either, so, no, that's it. Okay, uh, let's see. So, the, wait, what is it? Oh, right, they're on the same page. The, um, the, I'm going to call them nurses because that's the mm-hmm. only term that I, the healer, the shaman, I guess, uh, that is kind of closest to all of that backs away towards the door. So the one right in the middle of uh, Amrun and Elzer and all of them will back away towards the door. Um, How many cells? How far? Probably going to run straight for the door, actually. But it's blocked by a gray dude. Yeah. Right into there. Burn. Ah. Does he say, say uh, anything? Or? Uh, she doesn't say anything. Uh, but she does draw a dagger and tries to stab her way through. Ooh, actually, that's a hit. <laughs> nice. uh, and stabs it in the uh, arm. Yeah. And you can see the dagger kind of sink in a little bit. And when she draws it back, you can almost see the, the wound closing just as the dagger is pulled out. Lovely. Uh, the one over there um, is going to try to restrain that child, still thinking that. Sure. Yeah, the two, or the other two that are your children are going to try to restrain them. <laughs> it's not going. It's not going so well. They seem to be be wrestling with them more than anything else at the moment. Uh, let's see, Igenu. Uh, Igenu is looking around to try to figure out what's going on. Kind of taken aback. Uh, 
Yeah. And stepping towards the door, I guess, with the... Uh, oh, wait, there's the third guy right there, isn't it? Oh, no, that's all three. That, okay, that's mm -hmm. the guy. That is Egeno himself. Actually, Egeno will look, will turn and step towards the, the, the transformed child uh -huh. uh, in front um, and will maintain a defensive stance. Not quite certain. Going to be drawing a short sword and not quite certain what to do. Doesn't know if they're actually still the orc children that he came in to see. Uh, that makes it the orc children that he came to see. It's their turn. Well, first off, they begin to attack indiscriminately. And it becomes pretty clear pretty shortly that whether or not they are orcs, and this is just a physical change, they do not seem to regard any of you as friends, including the shamans, including uh, the Gainu. that seem to attack indiscriminately. On the Gainu, that's cocked, I'm going to be cocked. No. Okay, well that's not good. Uh, it lurches forward and strikes. Oh, actually it's this one. Oof, that's nasty. It lurches forward, biting. The gainer steps back a little bit out of the distance and kind of feigns a little bit with the short sword. Then with its arm, which has got an extraordinary reach now, you see it's lengthened out, almost uh, gaining another foot or two feet from it. It slashes across his, his uh, chest, which is still kind of open except for the furs. And you see nasty, large scars appear on his, on his chest. And he cringes and looks like he's in intense pain. Um, does he look kind of poisoned? Or no? <laughs> if you want to take a closer look, you can do Not so yet. on your turn. <laughs> uh, as for the ones on that are wrestling with the nurse, uh, we'll jump to bite. That does not go well. It turns into more of a head button. It seems to be dazed for a moment. Then it tries to claw. Wow. I've never rolled so many more doubles. That's just kind of creepy. Uh, it seems to be ineffective in that case. However, the one on the far side. Which? Uh, the one in the middle, the far side. That one? Yep. Uh, the, you know, kind of moving towards to, to attempt to grapple. The blue child lurches, catches its arm in its teeth, and bites down, nearly, nearly uh, uh, biting off the hand. Then, with the hand still clamped there, proceeds to rabbit punch, essentially, with the two claws, raking into its, uh, into its chest uh, and its sides with a lot of pain. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. But appears to be uh, still standing, weirdly enough. On the other side of that one, that one in the far corner will move over to, uh, to go after the shaman who's there. This one? Yes. Okay. So essentially the two of them are getting up on the shaman. Shaman seems dreadfully wounded by the two of them, and also seems to be cringing in pain. Uh, now, the ones that are over on this side, the one that Clark walked right by. Yep. Uh, ooh, that's a natural 20 to start with on the bite. Alrighty. Natural 20 on the first strike. Cool. Right. And a 19 plus on the third strike. That that was, those are all hit. Those are, that's, that's kind of, ow. It's been fun, guys. Uh, that Let's is uh, 12 points of piercing damage on the first strike. Okay. Uh, 8 points of slashing damage on the second strike. Okay. And 8 points of slashing on the second, uh, third strike. Okay. Uh, constitution saving throw. Uh, twice. Sure. First one's clear, second one's dark. Ugh. First one's a natural 20. Plus con is 28. Okay. And the second one is 12, uh, 9, 10, the 20? Wait. 7, 8, 9, 10, 20. 
28 as, and a 20. As the claws rake across your arm, mm -hmm. uh, you feel a burning sensation where yeah. they have touched you. Uh, but you kind of flex your muscle and, and kind of hold on to yourself and will yourself to stay in control. You feel yeah. for a moment like a cloud was starting to threaten your vision, but does not pass. Okay. Uh, the other one, attacking Elzera. I can't possibly roll as well, uh, although that is a uh, 24 and a 12 and a 19. Uh, you, two hits. Two, uh, the first and third, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, uh, 15 points of piercing damage. And then uh, 13 points of, of slashing damage and a constitution saving throw. Uh, I'm going to actually take the 15 point hit for her. Okay. With my reaction, I'll have it round down. So as it bites out towards you, that same arm that it held just a second ago, uh, it seems to bite down and then a blue energy swirls around your arm and you see his arm uh, grow uh, a little bit red around where you absorbed that wound. So I you do You one. still need the constitution saving throw. Yeah, it's just the 13 damage one and... The 15 damage. You said 15. Right, no, I took the 15 one. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. But you still have to make the constitution saving throw. For both? No, just the ones. Okay, which I make at advantage. That's a one and a four. Oh no. Uh, so that is seven. Seven? Okay. Nice trash. There but, is a distinct burning sensation as the claw rakes over your, let's say over the side of your face. Um, all of you can see the, the red welts that form as the claw goes by. The wound wasn't deep, but you can feel instantly as though uh, your skin is prickling and there is almost a, a red tinge on the edge of your vision. No other effects at the moment. Okay. That chance is what I'm going uh, to do. That's them, and that means it is Elzera's turn. Um, I am going to protect from poison on myself. Okay. See if that does anything. You cast protection from poison. All right. Does it do anything? Does not appear to do anything. Perfect. I sense sir. Okay. Um, so, I, <laughs> not poison, just so that other yeah. people don't try to do that. Um, uh, and that is an action. Um, I am going to... Bonus action. What can I do for bonuses? Not a lot. Bonuses are pretty limited. <sighs> mm. Um. Uh. No. That's all I'm going to do, because I don't have any bonus mm. action cantrips. Okay. Um, yeah. You still have your move, technically. Yeah, actually, I'm going to try to go behind Emeron. Okay. As you back up, it will take a swing at you. Yep. That's only a 11. Nope. As it reaches out with one of its long claws, it seems to want to get any more. And I'm holding onto my face, confused. Yeah. And I'm going to say how I feel. <laughs> I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy, <laughs> but, but no, like, I, my vision's going. Zach. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's not a poison. Zachus. Well, we look like we're in a pretty bad spot. We should probably like be fighting him from the outside, right? Outside the room. Yeah. No. Well, I think there's only one doorway, but it's up to you. I will cast sc Scatter, so that's level six. Mm, okay. And I will bring... There have to be places you can see? Yep. Okay. Because we can't see outside. Not quite. If I were to be here, cast Scatter... Yeah, you he can, he can see outside the door. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, you can drop a couple of us out there. Nope. So up to five people. So yeah, Clark. Not me. Are you, you willing? Should. You feel yourself being drawn away from the battle. Sure. Okay. Why not you? Well, pick me last. Pick okay. the others first. Clark. That's oh. one. Um, I will say, this is something that Zacchaeus would know, is the shaman and uh, the three shaman do not seem heavily armored, nor do yeah. they have heavy weapons, mm -hmm. and they are also certainly not expecting a fight. But one of them already looks very weak. Nate. Yeah, that's Get the I'm rest saying. out of here. Get, get the shamans out of here. Yeah, leave Clark in if you don't mind. What? I, I'm a ball of hit points at the end of the day. So leave you back there? I would say so. Yeah, get the NPCs first. They're yeah. weak. Were you here or here? Uh, back me up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. All right, so there's f yeah, one, two, three, four. This guy goes in front because he can. Yeah, he actually, doesn't. Since you're on this side of it, you can probably see them yeah. there. But and you guys all want to stand? Um, well, they didn't really get a chance to answer that question. Yeah. You have to decide yeah. for them. They can resist if they don't want to leave. Then number five will be myself. Well, Goes on the other side of the NPCs. <laughs> well, that's, it's, it's the only, the only spot you can see. Maybe. Well, I should probably go here. Although I, I probably can't see here. No, because yeah. you were on this side of it, yeah. so you can kind of see that way. But okay. Okay. Whoosh, as you all vanish uh, in a swirl of teleportation <laughs> energy and appear out there while you and all the NPCs. Uh, okay, uh, that is your turn. That's your action. You still have a move and a bonus action. I'll move up. I'll tell them to, like, get the fuck out. Unless they can be helpful. Well, not him. He can be helpful. And I'll move. No, I'll just stay here for now. Okay. Back around to the top. Uh, that is that one. Uh, let's see. Well... Dice Dice down. Uh, this one will turn out to the hallway and chase after the people who are trying to get away. I can see them standing right beside them. And we'll attack. Oh. We'll attack the shaman standing there. Again, a bite. Slash, the second slash. Mm. Those are all hits, which is not good. And okay, uh, that shaman is nearly killed. You can see him kind of rocked back on his feet as the slash goes, as the bite leaps in first of all, catching him on the, on the leg as he's kind of backing up a little bit, causing him to stumble. Then the two slashes, one across the chest, one across the uh, the, the upper leg, and uh, he kind of cringes and almost curls in on himself. Still alive, but not looking great. Clark. All right, well, we should probably get back to business with the, the glaive, I would imagine. So we'll switch weapons. Okay. Um, the glaive more or less appears in your hand. Ooh, that's that's nice. Um, and we'll uh, strike at the fellow I was striking at before. Okay. Yeah. The one in the corner. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, two strikes. See what happens. Uh, first strike is uh, twenty-six plus. That's it. The other one is a. Uh, f 12, so probably a miss. 12 misses. Okay. Uh, uh, nine regular ass damage. And, whoops. And another four necrotic damage in this case. Let's okay. See how it likes that. Uh, it does not seem to like that. Hooray! As you see, the uh, the blade kind of 
cut into and weirdly kind of sever some of the out exterior blue skin, mm -hmm. revealing green skin beneath. Uh, as it sort of starts to cut into it. It's deeply. like a gobstopper. It, 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 <laughs> it howls in pain, not a, a, a howl that an orc would make, a howl yeah. of a monster would make. Okay, all right. Not all right. to hit the point too heavily. Um, it had green skin under the gray, the blue skin? Yeah. That's what he saw. Okay. I would like to take a bonus action. Okay. Uh, I have a new uh, feat uh -oh. called Polar Master. Uh -huh. Hey! He's going to switch the... the Blade of the glaive behind him. Okay. And poke him with the, the butt. <laughs> okay. That's the idea, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, Thrust. Oh, that's. Yeah, that's not a thing, sorry. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, 22. That is it. Uh, much less damage to do these things. This one is a 7 bashing. Seven bludgeoning. Okay. And I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Does the necro still happen, or does it have to have, to have it's with once the blade? per once per round? Okay. Uh, Thought sure. I'd ask him. Okay, so seven points. Okay. Yeah. He kind of swing it around, catches underneath its enormous jaw, kind of sending it back a little bit. Oh. Um, it kind of leans forward a little bit, and you can already see that slash across his chest starting to close. Okay. Bastard. Yes, Amrin. Hmm. Well, uh, I'm just going to back up a bit at the screaming in the hallway. Uh, hmm. Uh, I'm just, are we in an underground stone building? Yes. yes. Okay. You're inside the mountain at this particular point, in rooms that have been carved out of the mountainside. Okay. Then and very clearly a former dwarven stronghold. I will. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what I can. It's kind of good we don't have that thunk guide here with us. <laughs> it might take offense. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Save NPCs first. Uh. I forgot to check what the casting time on that was. But, uh, good. Uh, the other four movement will go up to here. Okay. And he's going to grab this side of the door and stone shape it to try to grab that guy. Ooh, okay. All right. Stone shape. Uh, right. If he makes a save, then the DC would be 17. Uh, however you want to handle it. Okay. This one's neat. Uh, okay. Da, da, da. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's it's basically a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, that is a seventeen. Damn. Dang it. As he slips back out of the way, um, momentarily distracted by the strange wall movement, but more wary about what's making all the noise, mm. moving all the hands, making all the magic. Do you at least push that way, a, or move that way a square? Because um, it, it really got out of the way. It didn't really affect him all yeah. that much. Okay. Limbo. Yeah. No, I just wonder because I'm kind of filling the area with stone, but right. uh, not completely. So. Okay. Well, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, it is that nurse's chance. Uh, the two nurses are going to run. Which one? Uh, He's doing. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, actually, all three are going to run. The uh, creature there does not take an attack at okay. that nurse as they run away, limping heavily, actually moving at half speed, but um, enough that they can get to where essentially out of the scene at this point. Okay. Um, they're running away, so they're presumably to get help. Okay. And that makes it simpler for me because I don't have to have that there anymore. <laughs> uh, okay, Iganu. Iganu is going to. 
attack at this one that just is right in front of him. Uh, Are they gray one or blue? The gray. Okay. Uh, it's clearly the larger, uh, larger creature. Yeah. So it's I'm much more intent on, on dealing damage to it. Oh, yeah. that twenty. And I'm Woo! in the doorway for Go the Go uh, And third one. Ooh, almost another natural twenty. So uh, let's see. Here. The guy who's pissed. Uh, right, it's this one. So that's a good start. Yeah, that's a really good start. As he slices into this thing uh, with the short sword, uh, kind of uh, cutting it across the the uh, the chest, then stabbing inward and twisting a little bit, then drawing back the blade as to pull out more uh, pull out more wounds. Uh, it seems to be almost unconcerned with him. Uh, he's staying where he is. Uh, that means it is the children's turn. All right. Those two children are both moving in on Clark. Sure. You can probably give them an advantage, too. I don't use the flanking rules. I, okay. I feel there's enough places to get advantage. You don't really need those. Okay. The two, like, in that corner. Way yep. Back. Okay. A bite for uh, 25. That'll hit. A slice for 24. That'll hit. And a slice for 12. Uh, that'll miss. Okay. So on the bite, that is 15 points of piercing damage. Okay. And on the one claw that hit, that is 10 points of slashing damage. Okay. I'll absorb the 15. Okay. okay. Uh, you still make a constitution saving throw. Certainly. One sec. I'll take 10 and con save. Uh, 10. 10. Uh, as the the uh, the claw rakes across your skin, mm -hmm. it is kind of being pulled away by the blue energy and, and coming across onto uh, uh, Amrun's arm. You can see the little bit of blood building up underneath the skin. Okay. But as it breaks the skin, you feel the claws dig in just a little bit, and there's a strange pulse in your arm, and the arm feels a little bit weird, almost numb. I know that feeling. Uh, that's that one. Let me add this to my list. Uh, that's those two children. Oh, actually, that's one of the children. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 and 19 to hit. Both hits. And a 27 to hit. Oh, all three hits. Uh, yeah, it's still going to do that instinctually. That is uh, uh, 13 damage. Okay. Uh, 14 damage. And 7 damage. The two uh, over there are closing in on Elzera. As a bonus action. Mm -hmm. A bonus action? As a bonus action. You need a reaction to act in someone else's turn. Uh, one moment. Uh, there's a thing here, one second. Okay. Got to find it here. In the meantime, you can move those two closer to Elzera. Mm -hmm. It's a reaction to have the damage of one known mundane attack. Yes. So I would like to have the 14. Okay. If I could. Uh, certainly can. Oh, this Actually, uh, no. They move towards Amrun. They seem to ignore Elzera entirely. Uh, you can make a perception check. Uh, what's their movement? 30. 24. 24? Above a 5. <laughs> they both look at you, kind of tilt their heads as if recognizing something and turn away from you and move towards uh, 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 Amrun. Can he make it to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, pretty sure they will. It's good. Uh, one of them, 28, or sorry, 20, uh, 22 and a 10, and a 19. 22 hits. 22 hits. Chomps down in your arm for 15. Okay. Uh, the second one's going to make so much a similar. Uh, 14 does not hit. Uh, 16 does not hit. 21 does hit. Mm -hmm. So, tries to chomp at you, but the other one has already chomped at you and pulled you out of position for him. That is a 16 slashing damage and a constitution saving throw. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen? You feel the burn from where it slashed you, uh, but you also feel the cool blue water 
folding, folding over the burn. Uh, let's see. One more. Oh, actually, this guy over here. I forgot about him. He's also going to move in on Amrun. Uh-oh. That's a 16, uh, 22, yes. natural 20. So a this 10. Is probably uh, Amrun going down. Cool. No, I actually won't go down yet. Me too, uh, nine points. Okay. Uh, and the crit. I failed this. And second. the crit was... I did too. Did. Yep. 15 points. Oh, absolutely. Slashing damage. It all happened at once. So. I got four hit points left. Oh, shit. Oh, actually, a, a, a constitution saving throw. <laughs> nope. You feel this time the, the burn along your arm, on your, actually on your leg as it slices up along it, and you can feel this after, after effect, lingering, painful. Uh, that's their turn. The Gainu. The Gainu had a lot of success stabbing at this guy before he's going to do it again. That's not as successful. Manages to stab him across the face. Doing, uh, sorry, doing a decent amount of damage, you think, to its face. Oh, I regret changing spirit guardians to a different spell. Ah. Uh, oh, well. See. Yeah. Uh, before you, you see the one that you had slashed. Yeah. Has halfway sealed up the wound that was there. Okay. Um, that is their turn. Elzera, they yes. ignored you. Um... That's so. not polite. <laughs> you gotta teach them a lesson for that. <coughs> I am going to... Get two of the ones around Emrune in a moonbeam. Okay. Moonbeam time it is. Um... I think you could get those two or those two. I can get any two of them right now. Well, the, yeah, these ones are kind of diagonal with him um, on the third corner. Yeah. But the other two you definitely could easily get. Yeah. So, because it's four squares, so. Yep. Yep. Um. So the two of them are caught in the moonbeam, which will take place on uh, the yeah, turn. Our moonbeam. Yeah, do we still have a moonbeam type thing out there? Uh, it was a milk... Yeah, it's over here, I think. Last I saw it. How big is it? Uh, it there we go. There we go. It oh. takes up four squares, basically. Okay. Um, if only Amrun wasn't there, I would have died. Yeah. yeah, well, he's kind of in the thick of things right now. Yeah. If I could move past them, I would. <laughs> yep. He's quite literally in the thick of things right now. Uh, it will be a level three. Okay. You're going to remember that, because I'm not going to. Yes, I, I, I'm just <laughs> stating it. Nope, sounds good. You, you, um, pulling out some of the, the nasty guns. Gotcha. Uh, and I'm going to tell my shield to go up. Sorry, well. <laughs> <laughs> the shield is banging I, I, I remember, Clank. like, halfway through, like, Zacchaeus' turn, I'm like, ah, the shield. Right, you could say jump on your bonus. All right, well, it's there now. It is there now. Uh, Zacchaeus, you see them swarming. Uh, oh, and I'm going to. Are you going to move? Oop. Yeah, that's. Oh, that was close. <laughs> good, dexterity good saving. Yeah, exactly. Good, good, good dexterity there. It's almost empty anyway. Lightning reflexes. What is Zach is up to? I'm trying to see where the doorway is. Oh, come out of I am in front of the doorway. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's a pile of people in front of the door right now. And the beam is kind of great. And a bright amount of light coming from inside. And that light you recognize. <laughs> yeah. Shit's about to get real. <laughs> Do I recognize that creature at all? No. Or any of them? No. Okay. But I saw, like, the wounds closing up after uh, again who slashed it. Uh, not really from... Actually, yeah, <laughs> from there you can see it. Um, it's hard to tell because it's all very, you know, flurry of battle around him, but... Yeah. The thing in the hallway. Yeah, that was gonna be like the last resort. But yeah. yeah. 
And I'll back away. Okay. And blast the thing in the hallway All with right. uh, just a firebolt. Firebolt. Okay. Yeah. I have two rolls to hit. Thirteen plus eleven, so twenty-four. What? Twenty-four. Hits. I have a shield. That would have protected me from all of the. Oh well. I keep forgetting the two, the two little sorcerers. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. <laughs> yeah. Fire damage. Uh, the firebolt uh, explodes in this light, nice large uh, clump of fire that moves down and pff, hits him, but not as hard as you expect. Damn it. Um, that is Zachis back around the top. Uh, yeah, they're just gone. No, wait, number one. I want this guy. Oh, yeah, this guy. Okay. Mm. Okay. The large guy you just fired a firebolt at charges down the hallway towards you. Uh oh. Uh, and will be right up in your face, but unable to do anything when he gets there. So basically, he spent the entire time charging, but he's now right beside you. Does that guy get an attack on it? He does. Ah. He does. Uh, and that's a hit. Uh, however, it does not seem to bother him at all. Uh, it's sort of the black swing. Uh, the Clark gets to go. I'm going to spend a charge Okay. to do all the extra damages and the hits. Might as well do it now. All right. Uh, I'm also going to take a minus five to do extra damage, and I'm only going to strike one creature at a time. Okay. So that's that's the first thing. So Which one are you going after? The, 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 one in, the one in the front. So okay. furthest away from you right now. Okay. Um, that's kind of going to be a fail. What's the total? Negative two plus nine is less than one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not enough. Second strike. As you kind of gear up and, and preserve your energy. That's a little better. Um, nine and thirteen is twenty-two minus five is 17. 17. seventeen. Is that a hit? That is a hit. Cool. Uh, As it's trying to sort of move around you, but then. Jerky. And eight, nine, ten, eleven regular damage. And then another three necrotic damage. Okay, and plus ten. Plan ten more. So that is ten uh, more regular damage. Twenty-three. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times. Or fourteen. Plus 10, twenty-four. 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 Okay. Uh, as you strike it, the yes. uh, the glaive cuts deeply. Mm. In fact, separating what looks like almost multiple layers of being as it falls apart and dies. Whoa, that's sweet. It does have a soul. Uh, oh, that's not good. Um, <clears throat> it's KO'd or dead, right? It's dead. I'm going to take a bonus action to strike the other one. Okay. In fact, you can take that one out of the corner. It's gone. And I'll also take minus five on this one, too. That one? Yep. Yep. 19 minus five is probably not going to hit with a fifth. That is not enough. 14 yeah. is not okay. enough. Yeah, that, too bad. I just sort of just barely moves out of the way. We're going to miss. Can't save. Can't save for the two. Uh, they're, no, they're not there yet. We haven't got the yet. Yeah, it's not their turn yet. Oh, it's Clark. It's Clark's uh, I turn. Forgot the this was the one guy outside, and this is the rest oh, yeah. of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, is that Clark's turn? Yep, that's it. All right, I'm Rune. You are surrounded, but a moonbeam is at your back. It's got your back, Bo. I had a thought about what I was going to do, and I have completely forgotten it. Um, Plan B. Always go with Plan B. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. I have a thought. Uh, I am going to uh, reach into my belt pouch and uh, pull out a small bag of diamond dust. Oof, diamond dust. Mm -hmm. And I am going to cast Greater Restoration on that one. Ooh, okay. On what? Pretty sure that's uh, less than a... I think that's an instant. That's how to do it. Kill him with health care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... Here, give me two seconds. Thing, but I think it's just a, it's mm -hmm. a one action. It is a casting. one action cast. One and action uh, touch. Okay. And just hmm. to make okay. sure that I'm going to be... Greater Restoration. And so one of the following effects... So turn, turn target cursed ability score or hit point maximum. Hmm, okay. 
Hmm. I was hoping to get rid of a curse. One say. one curse is including. Curse. Oh, including attunement. Okay. Yeah. That's probably the one that is closest to uh, that. So, yeah, that's what he'll be trying anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you sprinkle the diamond dust, and it forms a swirl it's of blue. Its face. Of blue and white. It and it's yep. not the one in the moonbeam. And you empower this this moon dust with the power of Paloxia, and it pours over this creature. Sparkling water. And has no effect mm. that you can see. They're afraid of that. Goddamn. Um, that's your action. Mm-hmm. Move or bonus. I'm pretty sure I can't move at that point. You're kind of uh, surrounded. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, technically, I could go out the door, but that's going to be four attacks of opportunity, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, I got no uh, bonus actions, so I will stay there and weather the storm. Okay. Uh, Igenu. Igenu is going to take out the one that's basically blocking the doorway. He's more blocking the doorway than it is right now, but kind of stabbing at the one next to him. Uh, this one? No, the yeah. other side. Uh, actually... He's the one in the in the doorway is Amrun. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I mean Amrun is is in danger, but the biggest one just went after the the small little squishy mm -hmm. guy and the other other nurses. Yep. Um, I would not blame him for going after it. No, he's got to take care of the ones that are in front of him first. Yeah. So, uh, wow, doubles again, and why not good doubles? Uh, seriously, how does that happen? Are the nurses completely uh, off the board now? You said. The nurses are, yes. Okay. Uh, you're still there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as he tries to strike down on it, he's temporarily blinded by the, by the brilliant uh, diamond dust around it and ends up kind of swiping it a bit short, unfortunately. That was not good for him. All right. Um, that means it is their turn to do the save. So what is the save? What save is it? Con? Con 17. On 17, so that's a 16 on the first one. Uh, I was just hoping this isn't happening in the other 10 rooms. <laughs> oh, what kind of damage is this, by the way? Uh, radiant. radiant. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, 23 on the second one. Uh, that's a 6. A natural 20. So, uh, the First one does not save, second one saves, third one by the door. No, actually, it's only two. No, it's only the two. Okay, never mind. The, uh, the second one saves, so, the, so is it the half The air got a natural 20. Uh, yeah. yeah. The other guy is natural 20 because it wasn't even in the moonbeam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 14 damage, half on a save. Okay, 14 and half on a save. So seven. And it is of the radiant variety. All right. Uh, it does seem to slough away at them. Uh, one of them seems to grit his teeth a little bit stronger than the other one does. Uh, now it is their turn. Uh, the one that was facing off against Inagu uh, 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 disengages and runs that Which way. Which one? This guy? Nope, the one facing off against Inagu. The one he just tried to attack. No. Which one? This one? Yep. Or this nope, one the one you pointed to first. Okay. That guy yeah. disengages, steps through the door, moves this way. Okay, can he step through the door? Because I'm in the doorway. They're both in the ah, doorway. Okay. Um, he's going to try to squeeze by you. Uh, he's going to try to make uh, an athletics, I think. No, uh, yeah, athletics to try to move by you. You can resist right. him to try to keep him from going through the door if you want to. Oh, yeah. I don't want him leaving. Okay. Athletics or acrobatics? Up to you. Acrobatics. Oof, that's terrible. I got a 12. <laughs> you got a 9. <laughs> so. Oh, wait uh, a minute. Oh, nope, you're 12. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, he tries to push by you and just sort of step, step, step out. And you can see there's, there's this weird moment of him, like he could just attack you, but he's not. He's just trying to squeeze on by you. Um, the one on the other side of you is trying to do the same, actually. Um, that's even worse. <laughs> that's a seven. Um, as they seem to be trying to squish on by you. I get a seven. Okay. Oh, uh, I don't know how that meets beats so uh, it actually does squeeze on by you so the one to the to the or right the one that has this one? Wh which one is the is the difficulty because it's trying to move through the, the defender is the difficulty right so meets beats seven over seven or whatever it was 
Okay. Um, yep. I'm fine. So, oh. yep, disengaging, moving up the hallway. How far? Uh, be five more squares. Uh, the one on this side just moves into where it was, where that last one was, stepping out of the moonbeam. And the other one... The other one's going to try to squeeze on by you as well, actually. Uh, actually, they both will. They seem intent on that's a natural one, so he doesn't make it anywhere. It's like Black I got a natural 20. And uh, in the second one, yeah, the natural 20 was like you perfectly blocked that one guy. 18 and 14 on the other one, you managed to block that guy too. They're all piling up towards the door and trying to get through. I'm barely standing, um, but I can keep three small children to the Does the guy who get an attack of opportunity on the guy who ran? Uh, actually, mm -hmm. yes, good point. Very good point. Uh, and that is a hit. Uh, I'll yell at Anugu, stop him! Uh, oh yeah, that was their turn, wasn't it? So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the other one that's facing off against Clark will dodge. Okay. Looks like he's holding himself and kind of just. You almost get the impression he's kind of curling up like a child would to stop someone from beating them. Right. Which makes you feel a little bit worse, maybe. I don't know. It's uh, up we'll, to you. We'll find no. out here shortly. Uh, Elzara, it is your turn. Oh, wait, there's the one guy who's still in the moonbeam. He would be moving over around. No, he tried to move again. Yeah. Couldn't get through. Yeah, he couldn't get through me. He could go to the side, but I think he, yeah, he did move over to the to the side corner. Or? Uh, this side. So just the other side of the other guy that's standing there trying to. There we go. Trying to move in. Like linebacker, I'm ruined. Do they seem to be healing from that damage? Um, yes, they do seem to. Be. The, the radiant. And they seem to be healing. Yeah. You see all. You see the the areas where the skin had burned through starting to to heal up. And they're kind of snarling, but not in an aggressive way, strangely enough. More trying to move away. Almost like they're trying to run away now. What are you need for Elzara? Oh, it's my turn? Yep. <laughs> Isn't it... For them, no. then you. Uh, Nagu? Oh yeah, he did the thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah it was just before them. Cool. Um... I am going to use ah chrome. <laughs> <laughs> Smashes with chrome. Um I am going to use uh what's it called? Brain. Uh, entangle. Okay. Uh I'm going to get uh Everyone inside the door, including Amarin, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, with that. Um, so strength seventeen. Okay. So the yeah, there's an explosion of of, of vines coming out of the ground, which uh, strength saving throw will be restrained. Oof, that looks painful. Let's see that guy. Uh, that is a ten. That's not gonna do it. And that is a 13. That's not going to do it. So let's see. The third guy in there is getting an 18. So the one nearest the door saved. Mm -hmm. uh, Inagu. Uh, I, I'm doing it inside the door. Oh, inside. Okay. So, it so just after the Just after just the run for friends. Mm -hmm. You said 17 difficulty? Yeah. I get a 16. <laughs> no. So that's fine. I'm fine where I am. Yep. So yeah, um, the two right beside you are gone. also... also uh, Actually, now I'll use Favored by the Gods... I never get to use that. <laughs> that's usually and just what it is. Uh, I add 2d4 to a failed attack or save roll. That's, that's easily a minimum of two points. Uh, yeah. Moonbeam is gone, but Entangle. I mean, it's the same <laughs> radius, so. Uh, <laughs> no. No, bigger. it's a lot bigger. Yeah, it's double. It's a, it's 20, a 20 foot square, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. No, it's 20 foot square, same as the Yeah, no, 4 by 4. Two 20 by two foot is, is 4 by, by 4. Mm -hmm. 20 is 4 by 4. I thought that's how big the moonbeam moon moon was. Nope. Oh, okay. Moonbeam moon is 10. Ah, it's a laser. Ooh, yeah. All right. But well, it's covering that whole We, we know that they're, they're caught yeah. and uh, trying not to be. And it's difficult to rank. All right. Uh, that is Elzera. Do you want to move or bonus? Um. How am I feeling right now? 
Um, there's that burning sensation in the back that's not gone away at all. A little bit of red fog around the eyes. Hasn't gotten any worse. Okay. Um, I've noticed that the one with Clark is cowering and they're all trying to leave. Yep. Um, that's why I did the entangle. I'm going to... I don't want to terrify an Agu and turn into something. So I'm going to... Because they're already having a doppelganger issue. Uh, so I will say it's myself. You gonna what, sorry? I'm gonna say it's myself. I'm gonna stay there. Oh, okay. Ba basically, <laughs> I know how uh, the library reacted to me turning into things when true. they had a doppelganger issue. I'm not about to do that with orcs. That's true. Because uh, they can probably mostly take me. <laughs> well, I don't know about that necessarily, but... Uh, I can probably get away, but also, like... Well, Elzara is holding steadfast, careful on the other side of the room. What is so Zach is up to? This thing is right in front of you. Yeah, this thing in, on you. in front of me looks kind of it's scary. Chasing down the hall. It's like, oh shit, there it is. And I turn around and it's like right on my heels. So I will benign transposition <laughs> right here. Uh, but that's a save if it's not, uh, mm -hmm. if it doesn't want to do it, right? No, it's just I can either teleport myself up to 30 feet away or I can choose to swap with, some, with something else. So I'm just using the. Oh, you're just using yeah, the teleportation. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The transposition gets me every time. Okay. It looks pretty scary in here, so I will cast first step as a bonus action. Uh, the benign transposition is a bonus action, is it no. not? No, it's an action. Yeah. Oh, it's an action. But okay. it's a non-spell. All right, so you te teleport yourself deep into the hallway. Okay. Yeah. Or deep into the room. Or that's back it. into the room. That's, that's <laughs> now that everything's entangled. <laughs> that's that's interesting. Okay. Uh, that is Zachis' turn. Let's see. I think you're Where's trying to escape. Guys are... Oh, that guy. That guy's like... I will say subdue them. Uh, none of you see. Yeah. But you can take that guy off the board. That one? Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't see him any longer because he's uh, This is that whole disappearing thing. Uh, oh, really I don't really need to worry about that anymore. Clark, you're up. Kill the child. I mean, uh, <laughs> destroy the monster. Okay. Subdue. Uh, <laughs> Permanently. I'm gonna. D yeah? He's dodging. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so disadvantage. I guess I will not strike with the minus five then. Uh, disadvantage on the first strike. Kacha. Uh, Eleven. Eleven is a miss. Is a miss. And again, that's a little bit better. Uh, Twenty-three. Well, that's a definite hit. Cool. I like the sound of that. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 total. Oof. All right. Uh, you don't remember which one is which here. He's one you've been beating on for a while, right? No, this is a fresh one. Oh, oh right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Bonus action, uh, or action surge, I guess, mm -hmm. to strike again. Okay. Uh, but disadvantage, I guess. Still dodging. Kacha. Uh, that'll be another hit at uh, twenty-three. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, time to be subdued. Yeah. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen with necrotic in there. Okay. Oof. He's gonna subdue the crap out of that. I'm trying. <laughs> subdue permanently. As massive gashes start forming across his, this kind of large X in its chest, you can see the the skin kind of flapping a little bit where it's now been bisected into two Excellent. different areas. What color is it? Uh, it's like, it's three colors at the moment. Taste the rainbow. Blue, blue, green, and red. Okay, so right underneath. The green. first the first one fell to pieces that, that he killed. Uh, it was struck down. Uh, okay, it just died. Okay. Uh, but it, it wasn't like it fell into pieces and no. whatnot. No. Okay. Uh, and none of you can really see what's happened since. Actually, uh -huh. you can see what's happened since, as you do see the body starting to dissolve. I can see now, too, because I'm in the room. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's <laughs> Most of us are. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm figuring that Elzera is I can't really yeah. focus on what's happening over there, but... I'm the one I can't... Uh, uh, I'm the one who can't see. All right, good. Too many... Uh, or but yes, it does seem to be dissolving at the moment. Okay. Uh, almost... Almost as though it's eating itself mm. at wow. this point. Uh, that is sorry. That was Clark. We now have Emerin bound up. Okay, I am going to uh, 
reach out to the one I tried greater restoration on and go with lesser restoration instead. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to purge a disease. All right. Uh, percent of two. Lesser restoration. Uh, okay. It is touch. Mm hmm. He's right next to me. So, uh, weirdly enough, why is that not an attack? Um, uh, yes, it is a, an opposed roll. Like it was before. Uh, what was I rolling again? Uh, uh, you were rolling your uh, spell attack. Okay. Fire. Nineteen. Uh, okay. Uh, you reach out and uh, and call upon the divine favor of Biloxia. You feel resistance pushing against you, and you press on harder, feeling the full force like a wave of water pressing down. And uh, you see where you touch the skin uh, lighten from its blue color back to a sort of greenish gray color and that spreads out all over as the as the body sort of limply limply shrinks in on itself uh, and there standing before you is an orc child who dies an attempt was made and you get this sensation yeah. that <laughs> while the child was there the child's life was dependent upon that thing now it had taken him over entirely hmm. but he died an orc and that may mean something to some people. Okay. I saw what happened there. Yep. What? I see what happened uh, there. I, do, I will yell out, uh, it's a disease like the other one, but it's resistant. Okay, that was... And... I got nothing else I can do. Because that was a spell... Yep, I'm done. Okay. Um, let's see. For them, uh, the two that are around you want to get the hell out away from this thing. <clears throat> so the vines, well, the vines are holding them at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a. Uh, what are we looking at? Dexterity saving throw? Strength. Strength, Strength. saving throw. Yes. That's a total of 20. Yep. And the other one is a total of uh, 17. Meets. So the two of them manage to free themselves and okay. then try to charge through the door, mm. which is kind of uh, actually. I will drop it. Uh, okay. You're going to react and drop it? Yeah. Uh, Take them out you of can, balance. They're going to try to grab you. I'm being kidnapped by children. Uh, does a. Okay, it's an imposed roll. Okay. Your, it's like a. It's a basically a grapple. So I can use acrobatics? Yep. Okay. That's good. Natural one. Oh no! <laughs> so with their uh, twenty-one, uh, they grab on, on uh, grab you on both arms. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is it separate saves or no? One is helping the other. Okay. Uh, basically, but that ties yep. them together for that. Uh, that one. I'm still stuck to the ground though. Uh, no, because I dropped it. Yeah, no, so she dropped that, it. Yeah, okay. so that, so that you would uh, have a better chance at preventing them from getting it. Yeah, because it would have been a disadvantage for that roll if, the, if they had... Well, actually... No, I was going to... No, they could still I, I, grapple I, I, you. They couldn't move you. Yeah. I, I was going to use that to stay there. That's fine. <laughs> uh, this one that was in the hallway is gone, so we can just take him off. I'll take him real, oh, yeah. Real notes. Uh, the one that's facing off against Clark is going to disengage. And... Run over and grab the clipper. Try to actually try to move through the door, um, which you're no longer blocking the door because you're no longer under your own movement. However, Iganu is right there, <laughs> and he's going to try to prevent the one from moving. And he's pretty big. Uh, he is pretty big, uh, and that may be enough. This one? Is yeah. that this one? That's yes. Going over? Yeah. Clark, get the uh, no, no disengage. Just disengage. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, let's see. That is oh oh oh. The hairball emergency. Yeah. What? Yeah, I promised that. Uh, that is oh, that's a tie. Wow. Okay. 
So he shoves in, and he will be on the outside of the door. Is where he managed to get to. It's his last step of movement. And uh, no, the one that's right by the door. Okay. Because he's the one that ran in from where Clark was. So he just gets right to there. That's that's his entire thing. He's just trying to push on through. Kind of bullies his way through. Uh, let's see. That's all of them. Uh, that means it is... Oh, Igadu, actually. It's going to stop at the one that tried to move through him. Mm, no, he goes before them. He go. should have gone before them. I, I missed okay. him there. Um, but it kind of puts him in a more advantageous position anyway. Uh, all those... What is one? Strong one. Uh, only one hit, though, as they were running on by. Uh, it does take damage. Kind of slashing it across its back as it as it runs away. Uh, that is their turn. Elzera, you're up again. I'm going to run up to the one closest to me. Okay. The two and of them are basically holding on to Amrun's arms. Uh, uh, and I'm going to cast Lesser Restoration on that one. Okay. It is an opposed roll. Mm-hmm. attack, so that is a 22. 22. So, you feel the resistance and you think you've managed to do it. You see growing around your hand where you touch him a little bit of the blue skin fading and then it grows back. Uh, no, he's still there. Or who's, who's oh, he's was over here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He did. Oh, he died a long time ago. Yeah, sorry. So, unfortunately, it feels like it was not successful. It resisted you and controlled the body. Hmm. Well then. Snarls at you for the attempt. Um. Poor cat. Yeah. Um. Cat is away from anything terrible. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Can I choose this in the middle of the floor? All right. Yeah, that's what I can do. Okay. Move action. Your bonus. You're good. Uh, Zakis. Yeah, there's no way I can, like, lightning bolt these without allies getting in the way. Nope. Right. That would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> effective. Yeah. I mean, it's but entirely possible but to be bad. effective, but bad. Yes. I don't mind if you go to a room where Clark is and get me. I'm a bag of hit points. I can't make it there in that turn, though. Mm. I guess I'd have to be You could get about two squares away from him, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah you could get there. It doesn't matter if you hit me anyways, I'll still be standing. So what are you going for? Lightning bolt, these two. Like, I All actually right. managed to not hit allies. Keeping in mind that they are holding on to Amrin. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is that. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> we, we, we both said, Not just said a space though. thing, but yeah. yeah. They're, they're literally in contact. Uh, yeah, we, we, we both said, though, we don't mind getting hit. Okay, just, no, but, just wanted to remind yeah. you. Yep. But that's up to... Because Amrin hasn't actually said go ahead and fire because he doesn't see it going on, but... yeah. Uh, do what you want to. But it like, does conveniently put the two of them in the line. It just happens to be Emmer in the middle. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what? But Emmer, like from this angle, angle. Yeah, Emmer is yes. being held by oh, yeah. him. He's yeah, in they're actually holding on to him. Uh, so you got to cast. Trying so hard. <laughs> but I don't want to hit Emmer. <laughs> ah, shit. You can see me in there. It's true. Okay, so I never would have like moved in the first place because I, I figured okay. like he wasn't. In between the two. No, he's, he's literally being held off his feet right now because they're yeah. they're. I think I was right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right in the corner. In that case, uh, they don't care about fire too much, so no, no result over here. Yeah. The cat thing. Indeed. What are we up to? Chromatic or level two? I just want to make sure I'm using the Ooh. right amount of dice. <laughs> uh, let's see what our chromatic orb looks like. It's three D eight. What energy type? Cold. So I'll use 48 and cast it at level 2. Ooh. Alrighty. And a ranged spell attack. Yep. Yeah. I'll roll to hit first. Or is it roll to hit? Or? Yeah. Yep. 10 he, plus 11. Does he have disadvantage for firing into a melee? <laughs> no, I'm not going to. Wand of the War Mage. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> nice. 21. Uh, 21 is hit. 
Which guy are you going after, by the way? Uh, this one that's almost outside. Oh, okay. Okay. Sixteen. Cold. Okay. The cold sweeps over him. Doesn't seem to be as effective as you expect it to be. I think they've got that resistant to everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, that is Zakis. That is your action. You have a move or a bonus? Uh, yeah, I have a bonus because I've been on trans. Uh, first right. step is still active. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll. Hoping Emerald can get free, I'll first step myself over here. And possibly like, take one step back or two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Clark. How you doing? All right. Clark, you're up. Uh, full you charge. Have you have someone right in front of you. Yeah, I'm going to full charge oh, over okay. to those bastards sure. over there. I have a question. Yeah. If you're grappling somebody, mm -hmm. you probably can't dodge so good. Doesn't really have an effect on you, mm -hmm. strangely enough. Well, if you're being grappled. That's what I'm effect. saying. They're not probably going anywhere. Right. So I'm wondering if there's an advantage or disadvantage going on there. The only real difference is they they move at half speed because okay. they're, they're dragging somebody. Okay. In that case, I will try to strike them. Uh, strike the first one anyway, uh, at a minus five. Okay. Uh, first strike. 19. 19 is a hit. Okay. Um, one of these and one of these. So the guy closest to me takes uh, 14 and one necrotic. Okay. And if he slice a nasty wound into him. Not down, we'll do it again. Alright. Uh this one would be at a minus five is four. Mm -hmm. Minus thirteen. Thirteen is not yeah, enough. I didn't think so. Oh, uh plus ten. For the first one. Plus ten damage. Yeah, right. Plus ten on top of that, sorry. Uh actually. He did. Uh it strikes him down. Ah. <laughs> Damn it. He's still being held by the other one. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, actually, the only thing grappling does is your speed becomes zero and you cannot gain uh, any speed modifiers. Bonus yeah. action. Yeah. Bonus action? Bonus okay. action. Going yeah. after third, the other one? Third strike, yeah. The other one attached to Amrun or the one towards the door? S attached to Amrun. Okay. Uh, I can't really see the other one. 17 Ooh. to hit. 17? That is a hit? Yeah. Yeah. Please take for me. Eight and two necrotic, so ten. Ten points. That's All right. Uh, it makes him very angry, it Good. seems, uh, as Excellent. the large wound opens up on his shoulder. Ah. Uh, that is your action and your move. Yep. Bonus action was to do an extra one. Exactly. So, no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ruined. Uh, I am going. Actually. I can't really get to my pouches very easily when we've grappled, so I'm just going to touch him and uh, a lesser restoration. Okay. Uh, again, there is resistance. We're going to heal you dead. Natural 20. Woo! Ooh, that resistance. Uh, as uh, the the arm is kind of grappling around your shoulder, has you strong and fast, you simply touch, you touch the shoulder. Once again, the blue energy explodes over top of it. The, the uh, blue scales fall away. And there's a look of relief, strangely, as the face goes back to the orc-shaped little girl and then goes limp as she passes away. Does she have the injuries from his wounds still, or yes. were those in the outer? Nope, they're still there. Okay. okay. Well, I've got blood in my hands, don't worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a movement. I'm going to go... <laughs> uh, okay, it's an ally square, so you can do that. All right. I don't have any bonuses to do. Um, room. Right. Egu. Egu is going to try to go after this one that's right beside him. It's sort of egging him on, so to speak. That is one hit. That is one hit. Been doing well before, not so much anymore. <laughs> Didn't mean that for the run. Uh, oof. Oof. Does not take him down, but you can see now that one arm is kind of limp at its side. And the other one's practically dragging. It's limping, uh, and it's its turn. It straightens up. The wounds seeming to close on their own, not I'll entirely, okay. <laughs> but enough for it to. Yeah, that's fine. 
to take a uh, um, yeah, no, I can't see inside. So it is going to uh, disengage, move around Amrun, and start bolting that way. So it will get six squares that way. The one that's between you and the gun. Mm -hmm. Six. The other one looks around. What other one? The other one that's in the room. There is no. Oh Clark. no, it's uh, it is the last. That's Clark. Mm -hmm. That's the last one. It's all right. Yep, that's fine. We all look the same. I oh, know. A, a lot less uh, paperwork on my my account. <laughs> so looks around, just like, he wants to be free too. Yeah. So Alzara. Uh, I have forty-five feet of movement, so I believe I can get to him. It's just running at this point, you can see. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to once again try to lesser restoration it. Okay. Yeah, that really should be really should be an attack roll. I didn't call it for the other ones. I think in the future I may. Uh, for a for a non for using target. it offensively. Yeah. 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 It, otherwise it's it's really, really powerful uh, in, this, well, in this particular context. Yeah. Uh, but also against any sort of moving target. But it is still resistant anyway. Uh, Ran away dice. That's right, go far. Nat twenty. Woo! Oh, I thought I had a nat 20. That would have been funny. What is your total? 29. Okay. Yeah, because I did get fairly high, but not that high. Uh, as you kind of slap it across the back, just back, barely catching one of its arms as it swings backward, and you can see the the uh, the, the blue scales literally dropping away at this point, and it just sort of uh, falls forward and collapses into a pile. A young orc boy. Elzara is also crying when this happens, and she tries mm -hmm. to catch it. Okay. Uh, as it's falling. What is your dex? Uh, my dex is Above 14. It. Yeah, you, you kind of catch it before it completely collapses to the ground, but the, the body's already cold, and the wounds are still there. That one was fairly wounded, actually. Yeah. Um, and But there is a, a weird look, strangely enough, which you see very close up, a weird look of peace that's passed across this child's face. But the child is no more than half a dozen years, maybe a dozen years. It's hard to tell in orc years. So I'm also an elf, so like... It's true. That's Everything for you is working against That's Karen halfway to right. adulthood right there. Well, that's that's yeah. part of the problem. It looks like a two-year-old to me. Goblin may be very like. good kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we will switch back to our main screen for a moment or two as we collect our thoughts. Well, and next to the corpse of one of the creatures, is it still there? One of the ones that Clark killed? Uh, it is already dissolving. The ones that are not dissolving are the ones that were restored to Orkwood before. Saved, not uh, killed. I saved them. Yes. Anyway, staggering on his feet, yells to the orc guy in front of him, whose name I don't remember. Keanu. Um, Keanu. Keanu. Uh, <laughs> uh, where, where did the others go? They escaped down the hall. Uh, we must find them. I will find them. And he starts running off down that way. You see him limping slightly. I will follow, follow him. him. Okay. I'll put some of the goo of the dissolved creature into a vial and stop her that so okay. I can maybe... As you watch it in the vial, it is disappearing. Damn it. Almost as though it is not of this world. Good attempt, though, vile brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad attempt on the high five. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, we're going to make it a couple of rolls to try to find where those other two went. Okay. Uh, it is going to be. Uh, I'll also help with this. Uh, okay. Same here. Okay. I'll point out the We're gonna make one, this one skill challenge way. then. Yep. Um, I will allow one repetition of skill, or rather, a re repetition. I want to put this. Each of you can roll the same skill, but you can't roll the same skill twice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what skill do you want to try using, and who wants to go first? Actually, we'll go on the same initiative we have here since everybody's there. Starting though with Amrun because you were the first one to start it. Okay, I am going for investigation because. Okay. Actually, hmm. when you say we can't do the same thing twice, so it's just us. If I use perception, can she use perception? Yes. Okay. You just can't. Use, you I just, can't use yeah. the same I just don't device. want to block her from using her perception because yeah. it's. And you can choose right. instead of both of you going. One person can help another, but that'll be your action for that round. Okay. Yep. So now I'm going to make a perception roll. Okay. Got a twenty. I'm total. gonna help you. Uh, I might be able to help myself. Actually, give me two seconds. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you and Inagu are running down mm -hmm. in, in one direction. You see evidence of blood splatter. You find the trail. 
uh, if I see anyone who's badly injured as I go, I will just uh, say a, a, a quick healing word as I pass. Okay. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anybody yet. Yeah. Uh, that's your. You found the trail in your direction, Elzera. Um. Yeah, we gotta have one of us with, with each of the groups. Yep. Uh, I am going to turn into a fierce rack. Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh. And Agu's not there, so he doesn't see it. Yep. Okay. Uh, I am going to then sniff one of the ones that was downed. Okay. Try to get their scent. Get the scent, which I do have advantage on perception when relying on hearing and smell. Awesome. And try to find which way it went that way. Okay. Make your perception check with advantage. Um. Mm. That is 18 plus 9. I hate to bring this up. Uh, no, it's like not for you. For me, I have exhaustion. Yeah, same. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, so that's just 18 plus 9, 19. so 27. You got a, uh, mine just went 19 and 20. Okay. Um, so, keeping in mind who you're going after. So you saw them going away. Are you also going after, or are you intending to go after the shaman? I'm following whichever one that uh, the dude is. Okay. Uh, as long as one of the two of us is with each group, then. Uh, Okay. That's better. Because there was only, there was only, well, they both went in the same direction. And if none of you were going after the shaman, I just need to know that. The okay, I thought one went after, I thought the one that went after. Yeah, the gray one went that way, and go the brown one went that way. Oh, you're right, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going after the gray one, you do find evidence of blood. You're going after the other one, uh, you start to pick up its scent. You have its scent. So it's one success on each of those. It's going to be four successes before three failures to see if you succeed. Uh, critical successes will count for double. Actually, sorry, let's make this uh, two before three. No, three before two. That's what I want. Three successes before two failures. Okay. Just to make it so a little shorter. So we need shorter. one more success. So you'll need no for each of you to find your targets. So you have oh, okay. So it's two, okay, it's two separate skill yeah, checks. Yeah, two separate okay. skill checks because you decide to split up. Uh, that is Zakis. How do you want to help the search? Or you can do something else. Are you staying back with the corpses and? No, they have disappeared. So <laughs> they are faded. The dead kids have it. True. Good. So, what would you like to do? I will. Well, I do the hallway first of all. I also have a speed of 60. Don't worry about specific okay. distances. That's not going to be important. So I do also have a speed of 60, mm -hmm. just because mine is ridiculous yep. compared to mm -hmm. others. It's more important that you go in the right direction. If you're just tearing off in the wrong direction, it's oh, actually yeah. going to work against you more. Right? Uh, yep. Uh, I'll also go after the gray one because okay. it was right in my face. I did get a good look at like, how, how it ran, like what what its, what its feet looked like. Yep. So if I can like find put footprints, maybe. Okay. So I'll use investigation to okay. look that way. There's an eight and a thirteen, and that's why you're rolling with advantage. Does no, disadvantage. Advantage. Oh, disadvantage. Yeah. Because we both have exhaustion. Eight plus eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Uh, you do find footsteps a little further along from what uh, what. Uh, uh, Rune had found for blood. He's gone in this direction. You go, yes, I see exactly. Come to another uh, intersection, essentially. Know which way to go. Okay. That's two successes. That's good. Wherever you go, uh, you keep smelling him. Clark. Blood all uh, place. Clark will yell out, uh, left or right. Mostly <laughs> to Amory. And, and neither one is actually right there. They've both taken off in, in each direction. So uh, it really comes down. Amory just say split up. But actually, uh, if he sees he's going with Amory, he'd say, go with Elzara. Okay. Or go with dog or Go uh, with the wind. I'm going to try to do an athletics check. Okay. To find this jerk. All right, so you're pushing on. You've got the direction. You know where the dog, which way the dog has gone. Yeah. Um, here's the idea. He's mm -hmm. going to spend a charge. Mm -hmm. Fly. And try to get his, his uh, running speed up to the point where he can just sort of launch and take okay. off. The idea is to get up high and look down. Yep. Uh, athletics. Nine, ten, eleven, thirty-one plus. <laughs> so I'll count that as two successes. Cool. You are running off in that direction. Um, you feel the whispers calling to you. Yeah. Telling that, you. That makes three successes for our side. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming uh, big black wings appear. Uh, 
like shadowy kind of yeah no, yeah no more glavy each, it's now each, back each, kind of. each step is now about 15 feet Excellent. long as you see uh, Clark with this strange almost shadowy form pushing him along oh crap it's got Clark <laughs> and you, you arrive at an intersection you see it right there in Excellent. front of you uh, so you have caught up with it you can take attack actions when Ooh. we get there uh, I'm ruined uh most effective thing that I've got after this is just investigation as well, so I'll give that a try. Or, ah, higher, okay. Uh, 22. 22. So you found that blood from where it, where it smeared along the ground. Uh, Zach is saw a footprint. You turn down that direction, and you have definitively discover no further tracks. Where does There's it only end? one thing that really comes to mind at that point. Invisibility. It vanished. Invisibility doesn't cover footprints. Yes. But now you know. Uh, back around to Elzera. Um, it's there in front of you. Yeah. It looks to be trying to, to get through a door. The door is barricaded closed. So it looks like another one of these rooms. But for whatever reason, they've, they pulled the door closed and seem to be holding it there. Uh, I am going to... Um, it does not look wounded at all. Yep. I'm going to bonus action turn back into myself and uh, do the the healing thing. Okay. Restore it to death. Restore, Restore it to, to death. death. <laughs> All right. It attempts to resist. Uh, that is a total of twenty to resist. Uh, that is twenty two. Twenty two. As the the dog kind of leaps and runs forward, the it sort of I'm assuming kind of leaps halfway, turns back into Elzera, grabs on onto it. What do you say? Anything? As you face off against this monster, but you know what's underneath. Be at peace. And the creature snarls at you. Its lips pull back on its teeth, but then its teeth start to shrink in front of your face. The the eyes catch you large and in anger and then small and shrinking and in momentary pain and then they go a little glazed and there is a limpness and a relief as you hold in your hands a young orc girl almost weightless at this point but that also means that the burden has been lifted I like fall to my knees and hold her and Agar is looking around there are no further tracks I do not know where it went it's like it disappeared. Uh, so, where we followed the tracks, like, what kind of room is it? Is, in the, is it just like, a hallway? So just like right in the Midway middle of the hallway? Midway in the middle of the hallway. Oh. It, it was at a T-junction, you figured out which direction to go, and then nothing. No doors around? There are. There's a door down about okay. 15 feet down that right. way. But like no not. footprints pretty here and there. This place is kind of disordered, so you would see the footprints most likely. Unless it somehow leapt or flew, you didn't see them do either of those things. How high is the ceiling? I'll look up. Uh, about uh, 15 feet. Okay. Anything on the ceiling? Rocks. Damn it. It's also dim in this particular area, but don't that bother you that much. You catch up mm -hmm. and... Just to see that. Basically. Just to see that in yeah. time. But... Clark hovers. Hovers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's out there. Enjoying this strange little feeling. Well, actually, he looks very concerned. Um... You can still hear the whispers calling to you. Yeah, he's going to hopefully get some insight on that, but that's up to you. He'll be listening hard to see if you can figure out where that all went. Did it you? seems to be a cacophony of voices, but one is stronger than the rest. All right. Uh, and it is uh, kind of reveling in power. Mm -hmm. I have not felt this since I died. I believe in your mission. Let me be free. Have you found the one that went oh, the other way? Are you going to go back to find them, or are you going to stay where you are? Because you guys have went literally oh, okay. off some directions in this, in this maze. Yep. I'm going to look. I'm going to try to open the nearest door. Okay. You walk down. Yeah. The door has a little bit of resistance, probably because of how it wasn't really maintained. Yeah. It's an empty room. Looks like it was one that wasn't cleaned out. The hallway kind of ends, as all these do. No real door on the other side. Rock looks broken but not disturbed. Right. Shut the door. 
there are a few things that could cause that sudden disappearance. You know many of them. Yeah. It could be anywhere, literally anywhere, if it knows any of the spells that you do. It never cast anything, so it doesn't mean it doesn't know. You didn't see it for a while. Yeah. As you contemplate that, I believe we'll bring this session to a close. We'll go back towards uh, wherever. Just meet up with everybody else. Are you guys coming back, or are you going to be there for a while? It's pretty emotional at the moment. Oh, Zara's having a moment. Clark's going to continue the search. Okay. You continue the search, but it unfortunately is yeah, not for that's fun. Do you continue with the wings for long? Uh, not for very long, though. Okay. Uh, they fade, and you hear the voice kind of crying out in despair. No, no more, more. Uh, Amron is very quiet, and uh, yeah, we'll go to see what happened at their end. At their end, you find Elzera has caught up to them. You probably can hear her, actually, uncontrollably, or at least... Not necessarily uncontrollably, but probably making some noise with soft eyes. Yeah. Oh. I'll put a hand on her shoulder and before her, he's going her to. arms is another one of those orc children. Inagu uh, is there as well. What are these things? I don't know. I've never seen them before. Do I, do I know of any creatures that are similar to that? Uh, you've not heard of anything like this before. Mm. The gray one, the big one, disappeared. I will hunt him. And you see him twinge a little bit in pain. We need to check the other rooms. Yes, we should. Yeah. We'll start the next session with that. Yeah. For now, we'll call it to a close. Uh, maybe an interesting, different little fight there with these strange creatures. They have this nasty capacity, apparently, to overtake and become the things that they have infested. I'll look at Iganu's wounds and... Are those okay? He'll shrug and say, they're fine. Grit his teeth. And we will pick up with that next session. Thank you guys for playing. Uh, if people are watching at home, they can be do so live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. If they didn't catch this live, or if you want to tell friends how to see it later, what should they do? You'll probably be on YouTube, and you'll if, if, if you would do the right thing, and smash like buttons, and push bells, and like and comment, and subscribe to the channel, would be great. Uh, and you will see the next video as we put it up. And if you want to find out more or chat with us or ask questions about what the hell were you doing? We have Facebook pages and groups and stuff. Legend of the Drowned Isles for the page that we mainly post when we're playing and that information. And then uh, Watchers of the Drowned Isles, which is the group that we chat a little bit more. Uh, if you have any questions, that would be the place to go. Thanks guys for playing. Well, it wasn't too ratching. We'll see. We'll have a week to recover. Yeah. <laughs> we should see you all next month. Yeah. Actually, right. oh right, crap. Yeah, it'll be March the first, I believe. Next time we Whoa, play, that. Yeah. No matter how hard February's tried to keep us forever, it has to end eventually. Yeah. So, have a good night, folks. Thanks Bye. for watching. Bye.